Welcome to the MEAC SWAC Challenge presented by Disney. Today, we're in Orlando at the Florida Citrus Bowl as the Florida A&M Rattlers of the MEAC play host to the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils of the SWAC. With former NFL and Howard University quarterback Jay Walker, I'm Tom Hart. What a way to open the season with this emotion and the rivalry between these two conferences. A game that started out as a huge rivalry between the two conferences has evolved and emerged into a first-class, one-of-a-kind event for both schools and conferences. Let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by the U.S. Army. Coming up, return of the Marching 100. We'll honor the legends of HBCU. We'll wrap up week one of college football. But for now and today's game, here are those impact players. Robert Smith, the defensive tackle, very active. He has NFL potential from his defensive tackle position. And quarterback Damian Fleming, one of the best quarterbacks in the country playing FCS football. He's got an NFL future ahead of him. Florida A&M won the toss. They have elected to receive. So Simpson will have to wait a moment to get out in the field. Jonathan Pillow and Devin Roberts back to return for FAMU. And we are underway in Orlando. Short kick. This is Devin Roberts from about the 15. Roberts has room. And a fantastic start and great field position for the Rattlers. Devon Jones with a special team stop for Mississippi Valley State. Damian Fleming will lead the Rattlers out. With field position at the 39-yard line. And right away, one of the first things you notice about Damian Fleming is the size. They got him at 6'3". That's more like 6'4". He's bulked up, added about 20 pounds, so he weighs around 200 pounds. 6'4", 200 pounds. Smart decision with the football and doesn't throw very many interceptions. He completed nearly 70% of his passes last season. James Owens is his running back. Play action on the first play that was tipped coming out of his hands, but Lennon has room and pass midfield down to the 46-yard line for Lenworth Lennon, a pickup of 15 on first down. And that's what they want to do, get the ball to playmakers and take a look at the weather conditions. 88 degrees, but it feels so much hotter than that down on the field. Not too much wind, and it's Florida. You expect the sunshine. We've got tons of it. The measurements say it's 120 degrees on the turf here in Orlando. 120 degrees. That's hot. That'll melt your cleats. So stay hydrated out there today, even in the booth, Jay. First and 10 now for Damian Flem Fleming and the Rattlers. Fleming keeps it, pulled it out from his tailback, spins his way free, and another first down. They'll move the change twice in the first two plays. Jeremy Johnson with the stop. Great recognition here by Fleming, showing he's more than a passer. That's how you run the read option. Once you get the overcommitment by the defensive line, chasing the running back, pull the ball out the stomach of the running back, and pick up the first down. Offensive coordinator Quinn Gray, a holdover from the previous staff, calling the plays for the Rattlers. Last season, Fleming got it done on the ground, but known primarily as a passer. Evolved into a leader over the offseason. They had a great summer conditioning program with Fleming leading the way. He wants to throw again. Pressured. And Fleming loses the football. Valley says they have it. It was Jacob Avery who punched it out. And a first quarter turnover will give the ball to Mississippi Valley State. Jamil Franklin. The senior from Jacksonville with the recovery. The ball security. You see Fleming do a good job trying to step up and avoid the rush. But so often trying to fight through a defensive tackle on his legs, able to poke the ball out. Great defense by Mississippi Valley State with coming up with a huge play when they needed it. There have been some changes on FAMU's offensive line, specifically on the right side where Reginald Turner is starting at right guard. Patrick Ivey at quarterback. For Mississippi Valley State, the Delta Devils went five and six last season. They won each of their last three games, but they struggled to score points. He hands it off to Cortez Frizzell, and Frizzell picks up a couple on the left side. Ivy is a junior out of Wheaton, Illinois. Junior college transfer. 
as of Wednesday of this week, they hadn't named a starter. He was competing with Jeremy Collins, and it's Ivy who gets the call. And Ivy's more of a dual threat type of guy. He throws the ball probably a little bit better than Collins, a little bit bigger frame. But don't be surprised if you see two quarterbacks play here today. Quickly to the outside and incomplete. Richard Drake at 6-2 had to go up to try and get it. Coverage by Patrick Aiken. This is Richard Drake's their go-to wide receiver. They've got a, a, a saying they like to say, feed the beast. That's one of their philosophies. They want to get the ball to the stud. That's what offensive coordinator Alex Jackson said he got that from his time he spent in Arkansas coaching under Bobby Petrino. They want to feed the stud. That's Richard Drake, but he's got to hold on to the football. So third and eight after the takeaway. Trying to keep this drive alive is Ivy. Little dump pass out to Frizzell, and Frizzell stood up at the 42-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. Another stop by cornerback Patrick Aiken. So the drive stalls for FAMU, and they'll have to punt it away. Valley, not the start you wanted. You had Florida and move the ball. The defense came up big with a turnover. Then your offense goes three and out, not taking advantage of the turnover. And a bad handle on the punt. Galon has to try and scramble with it, and he's taken down inside the 15-yard line. Montavious Williams was there with a heads-up play on special teams. This, this play just looks bad. I mean, you know, you've got the snap. That's one he's got to catch. It wasn't that bad a snap. True was to the left, but once he bobbles it, nowhere to go. Good pursuit by the Rattler defense. Several orange jerseys there to make sure that he can't get the punt off. And now Florida A&M. Great play on special teams, taking advantage of the miscues by Mississippi Valley. It's a loss of 30 yards on the play. That looked kind of comical when he was running backwards. You, you knew he had nowhere to go. It's not that funny to him, though, is it? So FAMU in striking distance. James Owens at tailback to the end zone incomplete. Over the head of Casey Glines. It's tough to go over the head of Glines. He's 6'6". Glines is a wide receiver they're expecting big things from. They say he's got great hands with a big body. As you mentioned, six feet, six inches tall. Good route runner. They want to see how he can emerge during this upcoming football season. Utah native is a junior college transfer out of Union. A lot of new guys in FAMU uniforms with some transfers, including Timothy Jones, a Kentucky transfer. We'll see it right tackle before the day is over. Two tight ends set. Etheridge and Morris on the field. Here's Owens. Cut down at the line of scrimmage on a diving tackle. Sean Fugate was the first one in there. This is a critical tie for this offense. When we talked to, to Quinn Gray, the offensive coordinator, he said that Coach Holmes wanted to instill smash mouth football. They wanted to be bruisers. They've got to be able to run the football. Well, the only success they've had thus far has been throwing the football. You can't live off of Damian Fleming's right arm alone. They've got to be able to run the football successfully. There's the hitman, Earl Holmes, leading tackler in FAMU history. Took over in his first season now as head coach after coaching the last couple of games last season. Third and nine for the Rattlers. They can get a first down at the two. Fleming fires to the outside. A big pop. Incomplete. There's a flag on the play. Dwayne Harvey was the intended receiver. Offside. Defense, number 54. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Jamel Franklin, who was offsides for Mississippi Valley State. And head coach Carl Morgan, a UCLA product. 15th head coach in Valley history. They won their last three games of last season. He has six wins in four years as the head coach. And, and that six and 26 is deceiving. This is the program that's on the rise. They were winless his first year, won five games last year, one of the most successful seasons in Mississippi Valley in quite some time. And he feels that he's got this program going in the right direction. 
and he's a defensive guy, so this team is built on defense solely. He was the first head coach since Archie Cooley in 84 to beat Time Southern out. and Grambling Florida State in the, the same start, season. Florida a A&M uses a timeout to try to set up this third down back in a moment. The fun is back here. This is Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. What a weekend to kick off college football, and here we are in Orlando. Miak Swack Challenge, Mississippi Valley State and Florida A&M scoreless, but the Rattlers knocking on the door. Third and four. DeMont Bice is in at running back now. It's a Clemson transfer. They want to throw. Fleming to scramble. He has room. A first down and a touchdown for the Rattlers, but the ball came out. They signaled touchdown. Fleming was over the line. <laughs> Fleming had one rushing touchdown this season. He coughed it up right at the line. Kevin Eugene recovered the ruling it. Ruling on the field is that the runner crossed the goal line prior to losing the ball. Touchdown. Daryl Davis is our white hat for this MEAC crew. They'll certainly take another look. You see the vision by Fleming eluding the rush. Realize he's this close to the goal line, leaves his feet. And I'll tell you one thing, if that defender was not standing in the end zone, that would have been a fumble. But because of the location, looks like he's got it across the goal line there. I believe that touchdown to stand. That was Kevin Haymore, the defensive back at corner, who was standing a yard into the end zone. If he's on the goal line, that would have been a fumble. Every scoring play in college football is reviewed as they line up for the extra point. The call came down from the booth. And, and on the FCS football level, you can make the challenge on plays down on the field. The MEAC conference was the first conference in FCS football to institute instant replay for all their televised games. The SWAC conference does it as well. Marcus Bent. The Mississippi Valley State coach is challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. The play is under further review. That's one of the differences you get. No, in the FBS level football, they review all the scores. Every game has instant replay. FCS football, only certain conferences. And then when you get to postseason play, every playoff game does. But they're fortunate now that the MEAC and the SWAC conferences, both schools, both conferences, utilize instant replay for televised games, which is the right thing to do. The technology is there. Take a look at it. It's going to be a close play, but I think if you look at where the defensive back is standing, he's on the goal line. Uh, I thought he was a yard in the goal line. He's right on the goal line. He's still got it there. It must be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was ruled a touchdown. And it's an experienced replay crew same crew that was in Miami Friday night for Miami and FAU so th this is going to be the close one I think once you see him go a little bit further on the play right there what do you have he's got the ball and he just crossed the goal line he still got possession of it firmly then as he's going down the, I think the knee doesn't come into play on this one because you can be airborne and have control of the ball and it'll count and keep in mind that camera angle is about eight yards deep in the end zone instead of being on the goal line. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchdown. Mississippi Valley State is charged with a timeout and has no more challenges for the remainder of the game. So four minutes and ten seconds in, Mississippi Valley State uses its challenge. Would you use your, yours in that situation this early? Anytime you have a chance to take points off the board, I think you use it. In this case, their first half, it's not like it's the end of the game. You can still, the game still has to be played out. It was a good call to go for it. It was that close of a play. Chase Barnador with the extra point. Flag on the play, and it would have been a change of possession in addition. It's not like you were stopping yep. them on the one, and then they're going to have first and goal. Yep. I'm just, I'm just happy I got the instant replay call right. My batting average on that is probably somewhere below the Mendoza line. 
Okay. I'm, I'm, one, I'm, for one I'm, I'm one for one to start. for one. I'm hitting a thousand. Offside. Defense number 98. The penalty has declined. The extra point is good. It was Robert Simpson who jumped to keep the point. It's a seven nothing lead, and Earl Holmes likes his start. I use it on the field. The 2013 MEAC SWAC Challenge is presented by Walt Disney World Resort. They are, they are. Visit MyDisneyDiscovery.com and uncover a world of grown-up and family fun you never imagined. And in part by the U.S. Army. There's strong, then there's Army strong. Find a stronger future as an Army officer at GoArmy.com slash officer. Great start to this one here in Orlando, where the Gators are always lurking. 7-0 lead for FAMU. Chase Varnador will kick it off. And a second opportunity for Mississippi Valley State on offense forthcoming. This is Julian Stafford from the 10. Stafford hit in the back as he spins at the 30 in a 20-yard return. Special team stopped by Marchane Godbold. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues Monday night from Heinz Field where Paul Chris and the Panthers will make their ACC conference debut against Jimbo Fisher's talented Seminoles. Number 11 Florida State versus Pittsburgh Monday at 8 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Florida State with the number 11 ranking. They must think life after EJ Manuel is going to be a smooth walk in the park. Jameis Winston will take over quarterback. He's got the size to replace Manuel, that's for sure. Frizzella running back with a burst straight through the line to pick up five on first down. John Ojo, fifth-year senior out of Tallahassee and a Florida transfer with the stop. And he's the strong safety, so if you're running a 3-4, type of defense as Florida A&M is doing. You don't want to rely on your safeties making those tackles for five yards down the field. You want the linebackers to be the ones making the tackle, and that's a key. You got a team that's going to have only three defensive linemen. You've got to be able to run the football. They put five on the line here. Play action for Ivy. Back across the grain and incomplete. Trying to find Kenneth Dabney, senior from New Orleans. Watching them practice yesterday, Valley ran at least 10 patterns using that same combination with the deep cross. That time off of a play action, pretty tough throw going all the way back against your body across the field, but you've got to make that play. Got to make a better throw there from Patrick Ivey. Ivey has started this game one for three for four yards. They had the interception to set up Pardon me, the fumble to set up their first possession. Third and five, and the play clock rolling down. And they ran out of time. Delay a game penalty will back them up instead of third and five. They're going to look at Delay third and ten. Game. Offense, five yard penalty, third down. Jay is a quarterback. What a huge difference. Anytime you've got third and less than five, you call that attainable opportunities to pick up the first down third and five plus becomes a lot tougher particularly when you've got third and ten the defense can just play soft zone coverage if you're going to throw the ball further than ten yards down the field you've really got to be able to step into a throw where somebody has to come wide open coming into this game the coaches said accuracy is the biggest need at the quarterback position for Ivy design draw he's got a nice block and he'll scramble for the first down and more Ivy down the hash mark from third and ten to inside the ten before Pillow finally fought him out. It's a 62-yard scramble. Great recognition by Patrick Ivey of realizing the coverage he was going against. Cover two man. What does that mean? That means that everybody's got their back turned to the quarterback. All these folks here, when the ball is snapped, watch them go with the wide receivers. Nobody to account for the running back for the quarterback. Once he has that, he's got one guy to miss right here in the middle of the screen. Once he makes that spy linebacker miss, it becomes a foot race. That's one of the weaknesses of the cover two man defense. You've got defensive backs in man to man coverage with their back to the offense. They don't know the quarterback is running the football. Time I out. like the recognition by Ivy. 
That's their first charge timeout. Mississippi Valley State down. already down to one timeout. After they lost one on the challenge, they used one here. What a great block by Cortez Frizzell to spring Ivy on that quarterback draw. With only two races left until the chase for the cup, Jimmy Johnson looks to maintain his lead on the field as the competition heats up at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, Sunday at 7 on ESPN, and also live on Watch ESPN. You a NASCAR guy? Sure. The Carl Edwards guy. Okay. I'm not. Don't claim to be. But I like Tony Stewart. I heard Tony's not in. He's got a broken leg, right? I like Tony because he's got, got that football player mentality. Seems like he'd be good in some pads, but he's out of it, so I kind of lost interest. So I guess I'll, you know, just go with the winner. <laughs> kind of tough to play football with a broken leg. Kind of tough. He would. Back to action. They give it to Frizzell up the right side, and he has to scramble to get back to the line of scrimmage. James Broadus, William Smalls in on the stop. How important is a score for the Delta Devils right now? You know, at this point, they've got to put points on the board. I don't think you're forced trying to get into the end zone by throwing the ball if you don't have to with the interception. If they can get it to 7-3, very minimum, that would be good. But what a response. They really needed something. Florida a &M was trying to dominate the time of possession before Patrick Ivey came up with a huge run to put his team in scoring position. Out of the pistol. Ivey gives it to Frizzell. He's got room. Nice cutback and vision. And that'll set up third and goal from the three. William Smalls with the stop. First of three, four there. You've got to run to the bubble. They did a good job of putting in Joe Nathan Davis at the fullback position to clear the hole. Tell everybody, anytime you see a fullback in the game, very active in today's college football landscape, if you find the fullback, you'll probably find the football player. So now they come out with Nathan. This is Nathan here. Let's see where he goes. If he lines up outside, they're probably going to try and force it to the edge. He comes in the backfield. Follow him, and you'll find the football to follow. In motion, right behind the fullback. Cut back on third and goal and stop short. I, I thought the crease was there. Davis did a good job of sealing off that center. I just think the running back got to the hole too late. Take a look at Nathan there. He's just going to go there, get to the outside, seal it. See, as a running back, you got to be in there right away. If he was there a step quicker, he'd have got in there. Make that one cut, that would have been a touchdown. Because it took too long in the backfield for the play to develop, they fell short. They're going to go for it on fourth and goal. They converted seven in 25 fourth down chances last season. I don't like this. And they keep it on the ground. Nowhere to go. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage is Frizzell. And Mississippi Valley State turns it over on downs. Akil Blunt. Melson with the big stop. Florida AM leads by seven and a huge defensive stop to get the ball back. The race to the chase continues in Atlanta tonight at seven on ESPN, presented by Pennzoil. For decades, beaches looked the same until one man changed summers forever with a pair of scissors, creating the bikini. Creative thinking goes into everything we build. This is the Mazda way. So at the Mazda New Model Celebration, you'll find our newest models, not closeouts. With our latest technology, innovations, and bold designs. See your Mazda dealer today. See the all-new revolutionary Mazda 3 in dealerships this month. What do you drive? Snatching stuff, take... Oh, what is going on in here? Uh -oh. It's okay, relax. Watch this. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hey, Dave. Wow. Is that your agent? It's the jingle. Try it. Uh, no. Like a good neighbor. Just say it. State Farm is, is there. With the sandwich. Oh, yeah. And the girl from 4E. Oh. And can I get a hot tub? Nice. State Farm agents help you get to a better state. It gives you a tremendous sense of pride to own your own business. We saw a huge defensive stand by Florida A&M. Let's take it over to Jay Walker now, who's standing by with a special guest. Thank you, Tom. I'm joined with a very special guest, the commissioner of the MEAC Conference, Dr. Dennis Thomas. Right now, you've got Florida A&M on top. But talk about the importance of this game. I did some research. 
11 teams, over 100, 1,000 student athletes have participated. This has to be a special event for the MEAC Conference. Absolutely correct, Jay. It's been a, a, a tremendous exposure for uh, both conferences, the MEAC and the SWAG, and for our student athletes to experience a bowl-like atmosphere. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Got to thank Disney and uh, ESPN for um, providing this venue for us to accomplish those things. And it is clearly a bowl-like atmosphere. And you talk about the ambiance of college football, Florida and bringing back the Marching 100. Your thoughts on that? Absolutely. We're very pleased to have the Marching 100 back and speaking with Dr. Robinson, the president of Florida and University. You know, they implemented a comprehensive plan to bring them back and they accomplished those things and the family, family and nation is happy to see them back. And when you talk about some of the things that they've been able to do and bringing back the band, obviously that helps with everything that goes along with college football and the MEAC Conference. One thing I think the MEAC Conference doesn't get enough credit for, you guys are always on the cutting edge of technology and that no different this year. Well, our philosophy is technology, if we can make the game better, if we can make the officiating better on the field with technology, then we want to implement it. And we've been able to do that with the instant replay, with the official, with the communication system, and some other things we've been able to do with technology that, that makes us better. And last question for you, Commissioner Thomas. With the way the college football landscape and college uh, sports are changing in general, what's the importance of HBCUs and the future of the MEAC? Well, HBCUs HBCU are a very important uh, aspect of higher education. And uh, in athletics, we have an indelible impression upon this country and all the outstanding student athletes who's gone on to, to professional careers, who are in the Hall of Fame, and, and, and just their own um, um, landmark uh, on our society as a whole. So we're very pleased. And we're going to talk some more about Hall of Famers coming up in the future. Once again, joining me, the commissioner. Thank you so much. Tom, thanks. back to you. All right, Jay, thanks. Commissioner Thomas, thanks for your time. It's third and seven now for FAMU, trying to get it going on the ground but nothing to show for it just yet. Damian Fleming, the quarterback. They've had DeMont Bison at tailback in the last couple of carries. Now it's Owens to throw on the slant complete and a big hit right before the marker. We'll see where the spot is. Reception by Lenworth Lennon. Demarius Pegues with the stop coming from his free safety spot. They're going to bring out the chains and take another look at this mark. First time on this possession that Fleming went to the air. When we talk with offensive coordinator Quinn Gray about Fleming's game, he used the word exquisite. There are high expectations for what the junior from Jacksonville will bring to the field this year. It is a first down by three quarters of the football. Delta Devils defense stood tall against the run. Let that slant go for a first down. First and ten for FAMU. Coach Gray mentioned that they'll take shots. They'll get vertical in their passing game. See how far down the field they need to get before they think they can take some chances. Two tight ends, Owens a tailback. Play clock at one. Here's Owens, snuck by a guy in the backfield. Try to sneak by another. That was Kevin Haymore from his cornerback spot with the stop. When you talk about the pressure and one of the impact players we talked about right here in the middle, that's Robert Simpson. This is what he can do. You see the swim move? He's in the backfield right away. That play was designed to go on the left side, force the running back to bounce it to the outside, James Owen. That's that type of engine in the hand quickness that Robert Simpson has that makes him a, such a special football player for Carl Morgan in Mississippi Valley. He was second in the country in tackles for loss last season. Preseason All-American, first-team SWAC performer. Pressure again and incomplete right off of the hands of Michael Morris, a redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Morris had a big spring game, three catches and a couple of touchdowns for FAMU. First game jitters an issue, especially for guys like first-year players. Oh, especially because they look so good in pads and you're, you're scrimmaging against each other. And the coaches say, he's going to be great. He's going to be really good. 
well, let's get him in the game. How do you know? And you see right there in practice, he probably catches that ball nine out of ten times, but he comes out here, opening season, first time in college, makes the drop. Al Tariq McBurse, the Purdue transfer, is in to take this snap. Or in a tailback, I should say. Pass is on time, complete for a first down to Dwayne Harvey. FAMU is perfect, three for three on third down conversions. And that throw, this is why Damian Fleming's such a good talent. Low snap takes his eyes off the defense, but makes a play like that look routine. Anytime you can throw that 13 yard out route and make it look easy, that's when you know you've got an exquisite talent, as they like to say down at Florida AM. That was a big time throw there that he made look simple, like it was a pitch and catch, even with everything going on around him with the bad snap. Well, they had their best offseason participation in years. Lock at the fullback McBurse at tailback now. First carry for Al Tariq McBurse missed last season with the broken leg in the first game of the season. Got a medical red shirt and he's brought down by Pegues. Number one, Al Tariq McBurse. You know, McBurse came into the last week without many options when it came to playing time. And then the coaching staff decided we got a week to go before the first game. We're going to let some reserves have an opportunity in a scrimmage to show what they could do. And McBurse impressed enough to move up the depth chart and get some carries here in the first quarter. McBurse was highly touted when he transferred into Florida and then from Purdue. They raved about him, but last year got banged up and kind of forgotten about. Given an opportunity, he showed the talent that had the coaches excited about his arrival in Tallahassee. He blocked two guys blitzing, but the pass is well out of bounds. Montavious Williams was the intended receiver. How about that for, for McBurst? You get two guys coming, usually you have to pick one. He just cut them both. Cut them both. That's what you do. That was great pass protection. You're going to see Norman Utah block inside out. He, that, <laughs> that's textbook right there. <laughs> they went down like bowling pins. That's just a heads up play right there as a football player. But the pass sailed out of bounds out of the hands of Fleming who converted 70 percent of his attempts last season. FAMU went four and seven overall four and four. In the Mia third and five now they've converted three straight trying to set up the screen. And to reach for the first down is Casey Glines. McGee's another stop from his safety spot. You've got a wide receiver that's six feet, six inches tall. I want him to play six, six. Good job by Glines, makes the catch. Gonna be stopped a little short, but stretch that long frame out just enough to pick up the first down. If that was a five, 10 receiver, it would be fourth down right now, but he stretched out, used that frame, was able to pick up the first down. Demont Bice is back in at running back. Tenth play of the drive, and they're not yet to midfield. Bice gets popped right at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down in a heap. Rico Shaw there to deliver the hit. Senior from Ruleville, Mississippi. He goes 6 2, 3 20. That's not running into pads, it's running into a wall. <laughs> That's running into a wall, that type of size. And when you talk to Mississippi Valley, they knew about Lamont Bice. They said well, when he comes into the game, they're going to try and pound the ball. Our defense is going to be looking for him, and we're going to try and pound him back. I think first round goes to Mississippi Valley. They sent a message that he's going to get hit every time he's the ball carrier. It's a new look offense for the Rattlers. Trying to go gap with a downhill run game. Incomplete. Nearly picked. Avery Boykin had the break on the pass intended for Lenworth Lennon. What a missed opportunity to make a huge play by Boykin. Fleming doesn't turn the ball over often. Only 10 interceptions in his collegiate career. That's one there. If he makes that interception, that's a pick six. That could have been a game tying interception. Fleming, four of eight for 38 yards through the air. Famu's lone touchdown came after great field position. On a botched snap in punt formation. Play clock dwindling to two again. Here comes the blitz. Fleming will tuck it and run. He's to midfield and more. 
And he takes it down to the 43-yard line before Pegues finally caught him, an 18-yard scramble. Both quarterbacks can run. The key is, was he forced out of the pocket? When you've got a pass, you want to ask yourself, where's the pressure? Was it Phantom? He's got a nice pocket, but realizes the clock in his head's going off. I've got to get out of here, showing he's more than capable of running the football effectively. Damian Fleming showing you everything he's got in the arsenal. He's run for 34 yards on four carries so far today and thrown for 38 on four completions. Bice is his tailback. They go big up front again. Trying to stretch it to the outside. And Bice will carry a couple of guys with him on first down. DeAndre Jackson with the stop, a pickup of six. And we know that Florida A&M wants to play smash mouth football, but I think right now that's their best running, attacking to the outside. This is a Mississippi Valley defense, particularly on the defensive line, very thin. You've got a lot of heat conditions. Make those guys run sideline to sideline, then you can pound them in the fourth quarter. But right now, I would use the speed that they have in the backfield with Owens to really be effective in the running game. And they're without a couple of key guys up front. Second and four, play action. Fleming has time, back foot throw, caught! A diving catch by Lenworth Lennon, and a tremendous adjustment in flight, a pickup of 35. That was all Lenworth Lennon there. Fleming did a good job on the play action, putting air underneath the ball so Fle Lennon can adjust. Watch him find the ball, adjust his body, and make a fantastic over-the-shoulder catch. What a way for the quarter to end. Fleming to Lennon for 35 to set up a first and goal for FAMU. Back to Orlando in a moment. My dream is to become a pilot. I want to be an entertainment or a criminal justice lawyer. I'm here to learn how to be an entrepreneur. My biggest dream is to become an engineer. My dream is to be an actor. Being a chef is one of my main goals. A doctor that heals through alternative medicine. Dancing is one of my major passions. I want to be a neurosurgeon. I want to become president. If I could reach for my dream, so can you. For decades, beaches looked the same until one man changed summers forever with a pair of scissors, creating the bikini. Creative thinking goes into everything we build. This is the Mazda way. So at the Mazda New Model Celebration, you'll find our newest models, not closeouts, with our latest technology, innovations, and bold designs. See your Mazda dealer today. See the all-new revolutionary Mazda 3 in dealerships this month. What do you drive? So, so. The boys use double miles from their Capital One Venture card to fly home for the big family reunion. You must be Garth's father. Hello. Mother. Mother. Traveling is easy with the Venture card because you can fly any airline, anytime. Two words. Uh, double miles! This guy can have it. <laughs> Want to play Dodge Rock? Oh, you guys. And with double miles you can actually use, you never miss the fun. Beard growing contest and go! I win! Oh! What's in your wallet? I was one of those guys who didn't think the Army had anything for me. Then I found out that less than one-tenth of one percent of all Americans wear the uniform of an Army officer. It's a small group of us, but we're among the most highly educated compared to many other corporations or institutions. I was surprised at what I found in being an officer and at what the Army helped bring out of me. I'm Major Miles B. Caggins III, Officer, United States Army. Find a stronger future as an officer at GoArmy.com slash officer. There's strong, then there's Army strong. Held over through Labor Day at Joseph A. Bank. Buy one, get two free. That's almost everything in the store. Buy one, get two absolutely free. Plus, buy a suit or sport coat and get three free. That's America's finest suits and sport coats. Buy one, get three. Absolutely. Great celebration here this weekend. And the Miak Swack Legends reception was held last evening, honoring Bernard and Shirley Kinsey, award winning choreographer Chuck Maldonado. 
Willie Totten, the former Mississippi Valley State head coach and tremendous quarterback. Charlie Neal, Lucille O'Neill, Shaq's mom, and the late Deacon Jones inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1980. And so during the timeout at the end of the first quarter, those legends were brought onto the field to a fantastic reception here. Satellite Todd and Charlie Neal looks good, Charlie. Everybody asks about you. He's clearly one of the legends in terms of black college sports commentating. You know a lot to Charlie Neal and all that he's done. And every time I see Willie Totten, you know what I think? One of the greatest nicknames ever you could have as a quarterback. Willie Satellite Totten. They reviewed the play while we were at break, and it stands to set up a first and goal. And West Virginia transfer Omari Albert is in at running back for FAMU. Before the snap, timeout, Mississippi Valley State. Wow. That's the third and final charge timeout of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. Well, that's certainly not what they wanted to do. And today we see the return of the FAMU Marching 100 Band, their first game performance since drum major Robert Champion died after a hazing ritual November 19th of 2011. His last performance was here at this stadium. The band was suspended four days later. The band director fired. And then in the spring, they announced that that suspension would extend to the 2012-13 school year. President James Ammons eventually resigned in July. Interim President Larry Robinson lifted the suspension, and they are back here today. They are much closer in number to 100 than the near 400 that they used to have, and it was something that you first noticed when they took the field pregame. They used to cover the entire surface. Yeah, right now, you know, they're in the hundreds right now. They're going to have some implementation of their policy. But, you know, you talked to Commissioner Thomas about it, talking to the, the presidents that were there. And I, I will say this about, you know, negative situation that happened. I believe that a positive came out of it, that college campuses across the country will be a lot more safer because of what had happened in Tallahassee, Florida. Sylvester Young is the new band director. Fleming at quarterback. Here's Albert first carry the game and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage but squirts up a yard. Jamel Franklin with the stop. They need Jamel Franklin to make some tackles. He was the only linebacker that started that's returning this year for Mississippi Valley. Coming from that outside strong safe strong linebacker position. They need him to make some tackles and good job there when he was the unblocked linebacker in man line of scrimmage chasing down the ball carrier. Franklin's from First Coast High School up in Jacksonville. Coaches raved about the camp that he had. Out of the eye formation with two tight ends. And knifing into the end zone is Omari Albert. Touchdown, FAMU. What are you going to do? Just power football. They want to be able to move some bodies. Follow the fullback. You'll find the ball carrier. By the time the linebacking core recognized where the football was too late, one yard in the end zone, Omari Albert. Albert redshirted last year at West Virginia. That's his first college carry. Chase Barnador on for the extra point. And he sneaks it in the left upright. That was a 16-play, 96-yard drive, which ate up more than eight minutes. When we come back, We'll tell you how the Bison of North Dakota State took a bite out of Little Apple. You're watching the 2013 MEAC SWAC Challenge presented by Disney. Walt Disney World. The Walter Payton Award watch list. It's, that's the FCS equivalent of the Heisman Trophy. You've got 12 football players returning this season that were finalists for the awards within the past two years. It's up for grabs. I think you got guys like Brock Jensen, the quarterback from North Dakota State. He's like this version's, uh, he's like the FCS version of A.J. McCarron. He just wins, 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 gets overshadowed by the talent around him. And Tim Flanders from San Houston State, he'll be a special one to watch as well. Julian Stafford returned two kicks for scores last season. Over the shoulder, nearly slipped, and he'll take a knee. 
Now, you, you wonder what the success that North Dakota State's had is that four straight years they've beaten an FBS opponent. You think America's going to start calling them the bison now? You know, <laughs> when, when you're there, they tell you, oh, we're the bison. We're not the bison. So, Tom, that's a little, little, little nudge at you. North Dakota yeah. State bison. In the back of my head now. <laughs> there you go. First and 10 from the 25 yard line now. And I go back to, they're down 14 nothing. You had a chance to make this a 7 3 game. I thought that was too aggressive play calling when they decided to go for it on fourth and goal from the four yard line. You need some points on the board so that your team can get some momentum behind them feeling good. Now you're down 14 nothing. Now it becomes you got to go for touchdowns throughout the game. And so often we've seen football games get ugly when teams get desperate. They tried to go to Patrick Durr out of the backfield. Illegal snap. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty, first down. Kevin James is getting the start at right guard for Mississippi Valley State today. Timothy Johnson was their slated starter. Junior from Clarksdale, Mississippi, didn't make it through the clearinghouse. Senior, pardon me. And so... James is pushed into that starting role. And the bad thing about that was Timothy Johnson participated in all of camp. So this is Kevin James' first time working with the starting unit as a starting tackle, put in a tough situation. Kenneth Dabney bobbled that one, second and 15. Are the Delta Devils a team that has to play nearly perfect today? I, I thought so. And what they had to do was they had to continue to play defense. You figure when you've got a defense that was as good as they were last year, uh, they were the best in terms of points allowed per game in the SWAC. They only allowed 18 points a game last year. They've already given up 14. The offense just had to improve. But now it looks like the defense is not as strong as last year. And offensively, they're still struggling to put points on the board. Great coverage as they try to set up the screen. Mississippi Valley State only allowed 19 points a game last year, second best in the SWAC, one of the best numbers in the nation. And that's, that's normally good enough to win you a championship. I mean, if your defense is that good, that's championship caliber. But the offense only averaged, what, less than 17 points a game? Uh, you know, you can't win championships scoring 17 points a game. So the focus should be on the offense, but it seems like outside of the big play we saw from Patrick Ivey with the run, they have no chemistry. And he's trying to do it again with his feet, but he gets stood up at the 30-yard line by Michael Ducree. And that'll bring up a punting situation now for Mississippi Valley State. And you see the difference of Florida A&M. Look at, look at all the people looking at the quarterback this time around. No cover two man. They're going to know who the quarterback is. They're looking in the backfield. The moment he decides to run, they see him. Great adjustment by defensive coordinator LeVon Kirkland. Realizing the quarterback likes to run the football, we're not going to turn our back to him. We're going to play more zone coverage and make him beat us underneath. Shershon Gallon has to adjust again. He'll take off running after the poor snap. And Gallon atones for his <laughs> bad hands early and shows good feet. He lost his helmet on the tackle. Dragged down three yards over the sideline, a 17-yard scramble redemption for Gallon. Whenever they punt, it's entertaining. I said it was comical before. I thought he could have got this off. You know, once that guy walks by, you kick it. But he sees daylight, good recognition. Look at the move. Didn't fool anybody, but he picked up enough yardage to get the first down. And it's been a Yepremian type day for Gallon. <laughs> He's been active. He's got rushing yards. This is in the negative category here. <laughs> that move didn't work. He thinks he's got some moves. But more importantly, Mississippi Valley picked up a first down when the offense desperately needed it to try and get back in this football game. The first one was a loss of 30, so he's still negative 13 on the rushing ledger. Incomplete picked off. Patrick Aiken down the sideline. And Aiken with the takeaway will set up FAMU. 
Ivy is injured. 39 yard return, but the most costly part of that play is the starting quarterback still on his back. Too much mustard on this ball here. A guy that's going only five yards across the line of scrimmage, you got thrown in front of him. He tries to zip it. Too hot to handle. Off the hands of Kenneth Dabney. And that was a gimme interception there. So, so often, you know, we've seen Ivy. He's got a strong arm, but there are a bunch of people in America that have strong arms. What you have to do is become a passer and realize you can't throw every pass 100 RPMs or 100 miles an hour. Take something off of it, make a more accurate throw. Fell awkwardly on his left side after trying to make the tackle. Landed on his elbow and got a little jammed up. They said coming in they didn't want a quarterback carousel, but everybody must be ready, so we may see a call to Jeremy Collins' next possession. James Owens at tailback for FAMU. I never heard a song like playing right in the middle <laughs> of the game taking place here. <laughs> Normally, that's a band violation. No AMD offense. Oh, no. First down. How, how do you call that delay game when they've got stadium music being played? On a neutral site here On a in neutral Orlando. Neutral site game, yeah. <laughs> Ivy testing out that shoulder on the Valley sideline with the athletic training staff. The Earl Holmes brings some intensity to this Rattler program. 10-year NFL veteran. He had 171 tackles his senior year at FAMU. That's a busy man. Oh, he was two-time MEAC Defensive Player of the Year. Did the same thing in the NFL, All-American. Played for the Pittsburgh Steelers the majority of his career. Also a Cleveland. As the play clock was started properly, the team delayed in getting to the I, field I and snapping the, the ball prior to the expiration of the play clock. The penalty will remain in force. They're going to keep it in play. First They're down. saying that Florida A&M took too long to leave off the sideline off the after the turnover. I think with Earl Holmes, when you see that, the sixth former Rattler to serve as head coach at Florida A&M, they like that. They take pride in that. Back in the family. First and 15 for Fleming. Steps up and fires. Almost picked. That was right into the bucket of Jeremy Johnson, who picked off two last year. Lenworth Lennon has had a big day. He was the intended receiver. Uh, another one that Fleming gets away with. This ball should have been intercepted. Late throw in the seam pattern. If Jeremy Johnson just holds on to that ball, that's a huge turnover. And this is what you call the, the, the first game is showing for Fleming. We've seen him be late a couple times on a couple throws, particularly on the scene. Those throws, they require timing. He's been holding on to the football a little bit. When you're a quarterback that's got a career 65% completion ratio, you're extremely accurate. We've not seen the accuracy here today from Damian Fleming. Low snap. Pressure coming. They set up the screen. Beautiful play call, but James Owens... Is surrounded at the 19-yard line. Jeremy Johnson, first man there. They call Johnson pound for pound the toughest guy on the team. He stands just 5'9", 170. Pound for pound. Watch him sniff out the screen. Doesn't have the biggest frame in the world, but he's an ROTC kid, so he's got the discipline to stay at home, form tackle, and hold on. Former walk-on, Johnson. Out of Bassfield, Mississippi. It's be a big stop. If this Valley defense can stop Florida A&M from putting a touchdown on the board, they may be able to get momentum. Five in routes. Fleming scrambles. Flag on the play. He needs 12 for the first down. That was a crunching block. And inside the 10, it was Michael Etheridge, the tight end, who lit up the microphones. 
with that big block, but it will be all for not. Oh, the offense, number 58, 10-yard penalty, third down. Kevin House, the center, flag for holding. This is what I'm talking about, the timing. Cover two, this is the weakness of the defense. You're going to have a Florida A&M receiver wide open. Where's the timing on getting it there? Once he clears that linebacker, he's open right now. Get him the football. This is where this is the money zone. That's the sweet spot. Tom, it don't get no sweeter as a quarterback. He missed him, took off running. That's that timing that I think played in the first game that we're not seeing from Damian Fleming. Robert Simpson, preseason first team all conference performer, has been limping around for the Devils. On the ground for Bice. And some extra pushing and shoving. John Fugate made the tackle. Simpson, though, has been a key player on this defense. He's their only returning starter up front. Coaching staff loves his talent, but they say, you know, if he took game prep more seriously and could develop better habits, he'd be unstoppable. Chase Varnador hit a couple of huge kicks last year for Fabio. He's on to attempt this 40-yarder. And he leaves it left. And the Mississippi Valley State defense is able to stand up, trailing by two touchdowns here in Orlando. The 2013 MEAC SWAC Challenge is presented by Walt Disney World Resort. Visit MyDisneyDiscovery.com and uncover a world of grown-up and family fun you never imagined. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Waterside stage at Downtown Disney. Yesterday, pep bands from both schools performed. Cheerleaders and mascots were in attendance. Each school's head coach and team captains addressed the crowd. What a great experience for the student athletes. More than a thousand of them have participated in the MEAC SWAC Challenge in its brief history. It's bigger than a football game. I mean, this is like a bowl type atmosphere, bowl week. Fantastic job put on by Disney and the MEAC SWAC Challenge. Patrick Ivey back on the field. He lost the football and he has to cover it up. Remember, Ivey got jammed up after throwing the interception on the tackle. Never has a grip on it. Ball just slips out of his hands. And I will say this, if, if that was a stinger that he suffered, a stinger on the shoulder, you lose a little bit of feel in your fingertips. That's something to take a look at. He may be feeling okay thinking if I can just squeeze the ball tighter, I'll get a grip on it. If that's a stinger, he'll be numb and he'll definitely lose accuracy throwing the football as well. And he hands off to Patrick Durr, a burst to the left side, first carry for Durr. Good blocking on the edge. And he takes it just short of the first down. John Ojo with the tackle. A 15-yard run for Durr, the former cornerback. Yeah, they discovered him. He was playing corner, moved him over to running back, back to running back. And you can see he's got a, a quick first step, gets to the outside. And at 5'9", 175 pounds, he runs that ball pretty hard. Wait a second. You get credit for discovering a guy who's already on the practice field? Yeah, he was playing defense. He was on the wrong side of the ball. You know those defensive coaches try to steal the talent and hide them over there on their side. Yeah, they're desperate on defense. That's very true. Third and two. Durr again. Stop short of the first down. Just past the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Pillow with the stop. That was a hard pillow right there. That may be the worst last name for a defender in the history of football. You, you normally think they're kind of soft there with a name like Pillow, not a hard hitter, but... Ask Patrick Durr about that one. Pillow did a good job of filling the hole right there, slowing down the momentum, and he actually stopped Durr in his tracks. And so the pillow fight continues. Eight and a half to go <laughs> midway through the second. And they'll bring on the punting team. This is always entertaining. Yeah. Let's see what Gallon has in store for us today. His long snapper is Tracy Newton. Why aren't they going for pump block right now? They're trying to set up a return. I would be going for pump block right now. Everybody close to the line of scrimmage. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. The clock will start with the snap. 
fourth and one wasn't enough of a challenge for Schurch and Gallon, so they'll back uh, them up after the delay of game. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at this one. They're struggling, and they've got guys back here to do punt return formation. I would crowd the line of scrimmage, bring the kitchen sink at this punter, make him prove he can, one, field it, and two, get a kickoff. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field on the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. It's not just a punt team. It's an adventure. <laughs> and they're yet to get off the punt. So let's see if they can get a clean snap with a clean catch and a clean kick. Fourth and 11, Gallon is the punter. Another wobbler snap. Good looking kick for Gallon. This will back up Terry Johnson to the 30. Johnson dragged down, lost the football. And they whistled the play dead and down at the 45-yard line. Jonathan Davis, Joe Nathan Davis, pardon me, with the special team stop. 48-yard punt, 15-yard return. The race to the chase continues in Atlanta. Tonight at 7 on ESPN, presented by Pennzoil. Building animatronics is all about getting things to work together. Timing. The actions. The reactions. Everything has to sync up. My expenses are no different. Receipt Match from American Express synchronizes your business expenses. Just shoot your business card receipts, and they're automatically matched up with the charges. Two princesses have been escorted down to Disney a time or two. Oh, yeah. Fantastic for the family, but as you mentioned, that golf in there. I know we're in Central Florida. I didn't know there were so many beaches around here. <laughs> <laughs> There's water on all these golf courses. <laughs> First and 10 from the 45 for the Rattlers. Damian Fleming, Jr. from Jacksonville. Play action. McBurse, another good block in. Complete, nearly picked. Overshot Lonnie Lockett that time coming out of the backfield. What do you think is the deal with Fleming today, who completed 70% of his passes last season and is 6 for 12 so far today? I, I don't know if he knows what he's looking at. You know, he's been late on the throws in the windows and Accuracy, if you're a quarterback, you're accurate, you're going to stay accurate. But if you're not quite sure where you're going with the football, you tend to lose your accuracy. And give credit to Mississippi Valley. This is a good defense he's facing, too. You know, so one of the best defenses in the country a season ago. He's not going against a lesser defense. There's a reason he's playing as poorly as he is today. On the ground for McBurse. And he picks up four. Antonio Benson with the stop. And I still believe this is also an offense that's trying to find their identity. You know, when they talked to us, they said, we've got to pound the football. We've got to be able to run. I haven't seen a dominating running game. It seems to me like they're most explosive when they've got Damian Fleming throwing the football. So when you're an offense trying to find your identity, quarterback getting hit, not reading on time, you've got a pretty ineffective offense, it seems, thus far. They wanted to emulate the Pittsburgh Steelers, where it's tough to find a Jerome Bettis. Third and seven. Fleming down the sideline. Big pop and incomplete pass. Harvey, the receiver, Eugene, delivered the hit. Don't forget the targeting rules are in effect this season with a stiffer penalty, and a big part of that is launching. Yeah, that kind of looked like he... Well, he stayed on his feet. I thought had he jumped in the air, I thought he had originally he jumped to make contact. He just keeps running. He stays on his feet and runs with the shoulder. I don't think they can call that a launch. That's just a that's a football play there. Colby Blanton on to punt it away for FAMU. Did you think that was a launch? No, I, I at First, First glance, I thought, so. I thought it was, but as you see the replay, and that just shows you how difficult that call is to make if you're an official. Rashad Pargo has to jump on it, and he falls forward to the 12-yard line. 42-yard punt and a couple of yards on the return. Well, one of the activities that the players took part in this weekend was the test track at I. Nothing doing up the middle on a first down run by Patrick Durr.
Loss of a yard from Mississippi Valley. Are you surprised that Ivy didn't get a breather after landing awkwardly after his pick? I think so, because that would have given the coaches an excuse for keeping him out and maybe seeing if Jeremy Collins has the hot hand. You know, they talked about Collins as being more than capable, but they also said they didn't want to have a quarterback carousel. Right now, Ivy's making his first collegiate start at this level. He seems to be a little rattled. Sometimes you need a spark. Here comes the blitz. Let's it go yes. in. Complete and pick. Ball was wobbling towards Darren Parker, and the freshman from Miami has his first interception. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Ivy has some numbness with that tingle sensation. Trying to stick the slant route, and he's just going to miss on the throw. I mean, it wasn't even an out route. He just missed on the throw. Was he going? Who was he going to with that football? Great job coming over by Darren Parker, the true freshman from Florida, getting his first career INT. I think you're right with that sensation in his fingertips. That ball came out like it was tipped, but it was never touched. Yeah. Ivy one for seven with two interceptions today. Back to work for FAMU, already leading by two touchdowns. And straight ahead run by James Owens, a spin at the 15. And he's down at the 12-yard line. A gain of 12, Kevin Eugene with the stop. This is what they want to be able to do, just power football. It's coming up the middle, pull a guard. Owens gets by the first level, picks up extra yards after contact. That's the type of offensive philosophy that Coach Holmes would love to see them have the ability to do, to force their will. And I think you're going to see that right now. I think they're going to break the huddle, and they're going to come out and try and pound the football again. Force feed the running game. Holmes, first-year head coach, took over for Joe Taylor. Final couple of games last season. First and ten. On the read, nothing doing that time for James Owens. And he said, you know, it's not about the previous coach or coaching staff, but when we figure out our team identity, it's going to be smash-mouth football. We may need baby steps at first, but they're taking baby leaps so far when it turned in terms of physicality today. Yep, I mean, that's what they're trying. You see Coach Holmes telling them right now, hey, that, that's my fault. I mean, that was a nine-man box, and I think the play was, we're going to run it regardless. And he took the option of checking out of it from quarterback Damian Fleming because he's trying to establish that tone and identity. But Mississippi Valley, I mean, they completely loaded that box on the last time. Now they change it up and they go empty. The five wide for Fleming. Design draw. And he gets hit from behind to set up a third and long Jacob Avery the senior from Carson California with the stop for Mississippi Valley you know, and give credit once again I mean this is the Valley defense they bend but they don't break I mean the 14 points that they've given up to this Rattler offense has been assisted by the Mississippi Valley offense lack of productivity in the special teams I think that's the one good thing that Coach Carl Morgan can say about this first half thus far is his defense is pretty good, even though you see the 14 points on the board. They brought Harvey in motion, and they'll use a timeout with 4.03 to go in the Lord second quarter. Him. That's their second charge timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. ESPN 2 has a spell. I think they're saying protect it on the offensive line and you know, this way as a coordinator, you go in there and say, this is what we've been waiting for in these situations. We're going to attack the middle of the field or determine where you're going to attack the, the defense and step into your throw. You want Damian Fleming to anticipate. Things happen so much quicker in the red zone. Tell your offensive line, protect right now. This is the play that we've worked on. Protect the quarterback, and the touchdown should be there. Fleming is 6 for 13 today. Now, where they're going with the football? I'd say look at the bottom of your screen. I think they want that one-on-one -on -one matchup, and they've got it right now. That's Casey Glines, a 6'6", junior college transfer. Fleming looks to the end zone, batted away. Tremendous play by Avery Boykin to close on Lenworth Lennon. I mean, that was a fantastic play by Boykin. He played the outside corner like you're supposed to. Came off of his man underneath and recognized where Lennon was and was able to run back and get a hand on that football to break it up. Jay, making that play more impressive, Mississippi Valley only had 10 guys on the field. 
<laughs> I told you the defense was good. <laughs> Chase Varnador on, junior from Tallahassee, the Florida transfer. 27 yard attempt. He missed his last one. And this one whistled before he could get it off. The kick was good. It was fourth and about nine. So if there was a defensive penalty. They'd likely still be in a kicking situation. The result of the play is a field goal. We kindly ask that those of you who possess whistles, please do not blow those whistles during the play. They are very confusing to the players and could cause them to get hurt. So please do not blow your whistle during the play. Thank you. So Daryl Davis with the announcement to the crowd here. Florida A&M leads 17 to nothing after the field goal by Varnador. Florida A&M leads Mississippi Valley State 17 to nothing. Part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Julian Stafford to return. He took two to the house last year, including one that went 100 yards. Here he is from the four. Looking to the outside. Flag on the play. And Stafford to the 20. Godbolt with the special teams tackle for FAMU. Doing the return, holding. Number 80 of the return team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First out. Terrence Hudson got flagged. All right, let's check out Jay's debate. That's a sharp looking guy. <laughs> Once upon a time, but I got a bone to pick. NFL Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame committee. Come on. You've got five, you've got these two guys. Michael Strahan, Texas Southern, played in the SWAT conference. Ken Riley played in the MEAC conference. Both of these guys are number five on the all-time list in important categories, interceptions and sacks. Those are game changers. How are they both not in the Hall of Fame? Riley was with the Bengals for 15 years. They made the playoffs five times, reached the Super Bowl once. 65 career interceptions, 65, including eight in this last season. And you've got number one, number two, number three, and number four are in the Hall of Fame. Number four is Rod Woodson, by the way. So Woodson had to surpass him. And then for Michael Strahan, I mean, you know, sacks are game changers. He still has a single season mark for most sacks in a season. That's my bone to pick right there. I think that's well, a little Stra slight there. Strahan still has time. The clock's ticking yeah. for a guy like Riley. Yes. That pass is incomplete. Riley was a quarterback at FAMU. When he got to Cincinnati, Paul Brown decided he might have a future at a, as a corner, and boy, did he. <laughs> he had a great one, yeah, and also coached at Florida A&M for years. So he's one of those guys, when they talk about keeping everything in the tradition in the family at FAMU, I mean, he's a perfect example of it right there. I just think he needs to be in the Hall of Fame. I just I couldn't believe it. Six, I knew he was a good football player. I know he had 65 INTs. His picks, his interception return yards, and his interceptions return for touchdowns are all Bengals records. Pressure on, Look hit out. from behind, and the ball is loose. Big man will fall on it. James Broad has popped it out. Trevin Wallace saves the day. Doesn't even see this one coming. You can tell by the ball placement. Normally, you get outside the pocket, you want to secure that football. He didn't see the defender. James Broad is coming. I said Wallace saved the day, but it was his block which opened up Broadus. So. <laughs> You're giving him credit for getting a quarterback hit. It's like getting credit for finding a guy who's on your own team. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering why he looked so dejected when he ran off the field after recovering the fumble. Now it looks like they're going for a pump block. They bring three guys after him. That is a screamer that Terry Johnson hauls in at the 42. Johnson out to the 48-yard line. 
Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week continues Monday night from Heinz Field, where Paul Chris and the Panthers will make their ACC conference debut against Jimbo Fisher's talented Seminoles. Number another year before they join the ACC. But what a big win for the conference last night with Clemson knocking off Georgia at home in a thriller. What a football game. I mean, that was quarterback play at a very high level last night. Taj Boy, I thought Aaron Murray played. He, Georgia didn't lose because of Aaron Murray's play. Score that many points, you're supposed to be able to win on any given weekend. Very impressed with the way he throws the ball, but Todd's boy really impressed me in the athleticism of Sammy Watkins. Encroachment. Offense at number 88, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, first down. That was Michael Etheridge. That was some speed for Mr. Watkins, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I mean, he, he had one where he took the angle from the defense. Oh, that's when you've got legitimate speed, when you can outrun angles. Coming up at the half, we'll recap week one in college football. Battle of the Bands coming up in a couple of minutes. Fleming hit as he threw, uncorks one deep, and that's intercepted. Hauled in by Avery Boykin with a beautiful over-the-shoulder catch. Lennon was the target. How much did pressure play into this pick? Florida and them had what they wanted. You had Mississippi Valley with an eight-man box. You're going play action, so that's almost like maximum protection. You've got running backs in there to block. He's got time. He just made up his mind where he was going with the football before. Lennon did not get vertical on the throw. And Avery Boykin, that's how you play deep third of the field, comes down with the interception. It was Robert Simpson who got a hand in the face of Fleming on the release. I mean, that is... Realistically, that's the perfect offensive call you want there when you've got a play action pass and they're bringing eight guys around the ball line of scrimmage. After a couple of picks, Patrick Ivey is out of the game. Jeremy Collins takes over at quarterback. Out of the pistol, Collins to throw right off the bench, and his wobbler is tipped. His wobbler. <laughs> Terry Johnson got his hands on it. Smoking hot day, but ice cold quarterback play. 146 degrees on the field right now. Yeah, it, it's cooking out there. And give credit to both these teams. We haven't seen a number of cramps. Normally, start getting that hot first game of the year. Cramps all over the place. But we're yet to see anybody walk off the field suffering from cramps. Collins out of Greenwood High School in Mississippi. Wants to throw again. Second attempt. Less than perfect. It picked. Another one tipped, and this one's taken right back by FAMU. John Ojo with his first pick of the year. And I'm going to agree with you. Another wobbler that came off the hands of Jeremy Collins. You wonder if they scrubbed down those balls before the game. That's like four consecutive wobbly balls we've seen thrown. Ball wasn't touched, just fluttered. Julian Stafford not able to come down with it, and Jonathan Ojo with the interception. You know, on a day where it's 146 on the field, could sweat have a role in the grip of the quarterbacks? Yeah, you know, normally you can use the sweat to help you out. You like a little moisture on the ball there if, if you've got a dry ball. Now, if you've got a brand-new football that wasn't scrubbed down well, then that thing becomes slippery, and it's the most frustrating feeling in the world to throw. They need to kick him around the uh, parking lots at the half, maybe. Yes. Scuff him up a bit. Ivy handles a low snap. Gets hit as he throws, and incomplete. Casey Glines was the intended receiver. Deshaun Davis brought the pressure. But you know, as a, if you're a fan of Mississippi Valley, you've got to be thinking, wow, if we just had an offense, how good could we be? If we could play some offense and shore up our special teams, they're taking on a very good Florida A&M offense, and they're, they're, they've got their number right now. I mean, the defense is... Steady and this is a defense that only returned four starters from a season ago. So defensively they're getting it done It's just the offense is in the way Second and ten for Damian Fleming play clock at one All alone on the perimeter caught for a first down and a few more coming for Lenworth Lennon Lennon surrounded by white shirts finally brought down at the 12 Kevin Haymore with the stop It's a pickup of 28 yards on a catch and run you know why I like Damian Fleming? Watch where he throws the ball, and look how much ground. He's on this hash right here. The ball's going to be caught over here. That's a deep throw. You have to worry about him because he didn't have a lot of size. 
he gets it out there with plenty of velocity and allowing Lennon time to make defenders miss and run after catch. 85 yards receiving for Lennon. Fleming tucks it and gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Play clock, game clock rolling. It'll be below a minute to go in the half. Florida A&M has one timeout remaining. Taking plenty of time. Blitz caught and down to the six. That's when you get a Goes Dennis out. Hall. This is when you use your, your last time out. They haven't yeah. asked for it yet. Yeah, they brought the blitz on the outside. Hot read throw. Good defense. Keep him in front of you with the tackle. I'm very surprised you let this much time tick off the clock. Third and four. And now a whistle. Oh, wow. And the play clock will roll again after the confusion on the field. And FAMU now has to use their last timeout. They let maybe 15 seconds roll off the clock after the conclusion of the last play. It's a 30 second timeout. Yeah, and that's one where you've got to call the timeout once he's tackled in bounds. Call the timeout. They led what 25? There were 20. The 19 seconds came off the clock. It was 29 at the completion. Yeah, that they that they wasted. I mean, you, you can't kill the ball because it's third down. But with the completion, I mean, look at all this time. By the time he's down on the ground, call timeout right now. You can have 36 seconds to play in before the half. Instead, they've got 10 seconds waiting on some indecisiveness there. When Gray is not a new coach, he was the lone holdover. Earl Holmes is their head coach and his first season as the head man who has the responsibility when it comes to clock management at this point uh, normally that's a head coach call right there but if it depends on the way coach Holmes runs it if the offense completely handles the offensive situations then you've got to do it you know I played for Bill Parcells and Parcells instructed everybody if it's the last two minutes of a half or the game everybody looks at me I'm gonna make that call in this case you don't know if coach Holmes says everybody looks at the offensive coordinator for that decision whether or not to call timeout. They wait the return of the marching 100. They'll perform at the half. And we'll show that to you live. Chase Varnador on the field. After all of that, on third and four, they could run a play. You can take a shot to the end zone with a pass, couldn't you? But they want to take the points, and Varnador punches it through. Third and four. You got a 6'6 six, six wide receiver. You could throw a fade. You could. I mean, think about it. You got third and four, and you've got a timeout. You could have 36 seconds. I'm saying, but prior to them letting the time go off, they had a timeout. They could have done whatever they wanted. Then they call the timeout, and they settle for a field goal. So you're just going to chalk that up to first game mistakes. High expectations in Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem State, number one in the top ten of the Sheridan Broadcasting Network. They had a great run there. I think the, the biggest surprise is Winston-Salem State plays Division II football. So when you look at these schools here, you've got a combination of that. Rarely have you seen a Division II program projected to be number one at the beginning of the year. Bethune Cookman, Brian Jenkins, his squad, uh, he's, he's just starting to reload that program year in, year out. Arkansas Pine Bluff, champions of the SWAC a season ago. Monty Coleman's got them pointing in the right direction. And Tuskegee, number four, rounded out by Big Blue. Tennessee State in the top five, you know, then you take South Carolina State, Howard, Jackson State, some Alabama State. But, I, you know, they've got the rankings there. A little bit later, I'm going to show you my power rankings. You know, I give you the real deal. You just you just breeze right past Howard. Well, you know, well, we'll have time. Some people say I'm a little biased, so I just let you talk about them. Leaping grab in the end zone. Stafford thought about it. And he takes an ease, six seconds remaining. Number 85, Julian Stafford, receives the kickoff. Now with six seconds to go in the half, there's no way you allow your quarterback to throw the football. Come in, take a knee. And I think it comes down to halftime adjustments at this point for Mississippi Valley. If they could just get any type of offense, man, this would be a much different football team. 
And Carl Morgan, I think, you know, when you're the head coach and you're also the defensive coordinator, you know, you know by his nature they're going to play good defense. But he went out and made some changes on the offensive side of the ball, brought in a quarterback coach specifically to work with the quarterbacks. And so far, we haven't seen any dividends from that investment. Yes. Rick Warman brought in former CFL player, coach, and scout. So Florida A&M pushes its way through some mistakes, pitching a shutout at the break. It's 20 to nothing, Rattlers. After the break, Reese Davis, Mark Main, Lou Holtz will be in the studio for the college football halftime report. Recap the weekend, tell you what we're looking forward to. My dream is to become a pilot. I want to be an entertainment or a criminal justice lawyer. I'm here to learn how to be an entrepreneur. My biggest dream is to become an engineer. My dream is to be an actor. Being a chef is one of my main goals. A doctor that heals through alternative medicine. Dancing is one of my major passions. I want to be a neurosurgeon. I want to become president. If I can. This halftime report is brought to you by Coors Light. Coors Light is a proud sponsor of the MEAC Swag Challenge. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Great beer, great responsibility. Back in Orlando at the half, 20 to nothing, FAMU with the lead. Gene from Mississippi Valley State. McDonald's 365 Black Awards was... This halftime report is brought to you by Lexus. The Golden Opportunity sales event is here. MEAC Swag Challenge continues from Orlando at the half. FAMU with a 20 to nothing lead. And now after a one-year absence, the return of the Marching 100.
return. This concludes our halftime performance. Our band staff, Dr. Sylvester Young, Dr. Cynthia McCrone, Dr. Cynthia Mulvaney, Mr. Richard Lee Sargent, Turn of the marching 100 after a one-year absence. FAMU getting it done on the field, leading Mississippi Valley State 20 to nothing. More from Orlando after this. You're watching the MEAC SWAC Challenge presented by Disney. Let's take a look at today's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. It's a 20 to nothing lead for FAMU at the half. Tom Hart alongside Jay Walker as we get ready for the second half quarterback play. Obviously a big part of this game. What were your thoughts from both in the first half? I thought that for Mississippi Valley, it was non-existent. They've only completed one pass in this game for four yards. I think for Florida A&M, it was up and down. Damian Fleming playing with more expectations this year. He seemed like he did not have his touch. It clearly wasn't his A game in the first half. You see, he did some good things, utilizing his mobility when it wasn't there, escaping from the pocket, scoring the touchdown with his legs. That's what you want from your quarterback with the leadership, and then putting plenty of air underneath the ball so Linworth Lennon can make the adjustment. Those were the good things. The bad, uh, made a couple throws that just weren't called for. Determined where he was going with the football before the ball was snapped. That was an interception there, and he missed some open receivers there. Not Damian Fleming's A game, but he's got another half of football to get it right. 8 of 18 for 110 yards, a touchdown on the ground, and one interception. Meanwhile, Mississippi Valley played two quarterbacks, Patrick Ivey and Jeremy Collins. Neither one of them was effective in the first half, and you still wonder if Ivy could be banged up. Yeah, it seemed like he was banged up, and, you know, both of those quarterbacks from Mississippi Valley will be making their first collegiate start. One of ten in the first half, that's just non-existent throwing the football for only four yards. They've got to complete some passes. Otherwise, they're going to keep that donut on the scoreboard for the rest of the game. Ivy took a shot on a tackle after throwing an interception. Landed on his left arm. His elbow and his shoulder seemed a little bit banged up. Had a hard time operating after that. But he has his helmet on. The tough part about that is Jeremy Collins didn't help his cause. The backup to get an opportunity to play. He throws two passes, one of them for an interception, and came out throwing wobbly footballs. They've got some quarterback issues down in Itabina, Mississippi. And that's one of the things where tough for me to understand. You know, Tom, when you think of Mississippi Valley State, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, Jerry Rice and his great quarterback. Throwing the ball. <laughs> you know, you should have quarterbacks and receivers bursting out of the seams. But yet they're struggling to throw the football. Julian Stafford trying to make something happen on special teams. Takes it out to the 28-yard line. Curtis Alexander with the special teams tackle. And so what will Mississippi Valley do offensively after struggling in the first half? Ivy is back at quarterback. You hate to say it, but at this point, you've got to simplify the passing game. I mean, all the stuff that you tried to install during camp doesn't seem to be working. I'd simplify it, go with bubble screens, wide receiver screens, make it easy throws for the quarterback. And to put it on the ground, first play will net a couple of hard-earned yards for Cortez Frizzell. Total offense for Mississippi Valley in the first half. 27 plays. Brought them 86 yards. Yeah, that's just not enough. And those are rushing yards. <laughs> the passing yards are not there. I mean, we've seen, if you, if you got to look back and analyze them, Frizzell showed us he's got some step. I and mean, he can do some things. They brought in Patrick Durr, the speedy back, to run the football. 
maybe go with some running back screens since the running backs seem to be playing well and you're not relying on the offensive line and the quarterback to make decisions. Jay, of those 86 yards, 64 of them came on the Patrick Ivory scramble. I forgot so about you're that. You're talking <laughs> about 26 other plays that brought you 22 yards total. Yeah. And give credit to a Florida A&M defense. False start. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. When you're going against an offensive unit that doesn't have cohesiveness, you're supposed to put them away. And they pitched the shutout. Give credit to Florida A&M. And LeVon Kirkland has got to be pleased with the way his defense has played outside of that one long run by Patrick Ivey. Second and long. Ivy against a three-man rush over the middle. Complete for a first down. Terrence Hudson gets his number called. The sophomore from Greenwood, Mississippi. Best throw of the day by far. You're going to see Hudson here in the slot. And he's going to go down and just get around his guy. Find the soft spot of the defense. Sit down. Good throw. Way to step into the throw by Patrick Ivy. Any defense with a pillow on it's going to have a soft spot in the zone. Am I right? <laughs> you know, Jonathan Pillow's going to come looking for you when this game is over. <laughs> Ivy on time to the outside on the quick hitch. Richard Drake. Pass complete to number 84, Richard Drake. Has it complete at the 49. Gain of seven. Feed the playmakers. That's what they wanted to do. Establish that they were going to get some guys. First-year offensive coordinator Alex Jackson played offensive line at the University of Georgia. They scored 20 point points each of the four of the last six games. Remember LeVon Kirkland? Indeed. I was teasing the other day. I said, you look smaller now than when you played for the Steelers. <laughs> Can you imagine? He was playing middle linebacker at 300 pounds in the NFL. And doing it well, two-time Pro <laughs> Bowler. Cortez Frizzell with the carry that'll set up fourth uh, you know Earl Holmes who played with LeVon with Pittsburgh had an opportunity to mold his staff and he decided to bring in some heavy hitters this is the first college coaching job for LeVon Kirkland who was working in the high school ranks and that's one of the good things that Florida A&M offers you they're bringing you a quality coaching staff so there's no excuses if you're a player Corey Fuller, the Florida State product who spent 10 years in the NFL as their secondary coach. Out of the backfield, it's Durr, and Durr is dropped for a loss. Terry Johnson with the stop. You know, Pass just, just to number 39, Patrick Durr. Kind of cap off all the coaching that they've got there as you see them going to some of the wide receiver screens that we talked about. And I remember playing with Corey Fuller when I was with the Minnesota Vikings. We were teammates, and he was a guy that you knew would be a great coach. And then they've got Ernie Mills coaching wide receivers he played in the NFL you got Kirkland as a defensive coordinator he played in the NFL and you know one of the things that coach Holmes talked about is guys realize if you come to Florida and you're gonna buy into our tradition you're gonna become part of his family and you're gonna have the best opportunity to play on Sundays Terry Johnson is down on the field on a smoking hot day here on the turf at the Florida Citrus Bowl LeVon Kirkland said, you know, I ha I've had some great role models as coaches during my playing days. Danny Ford, who he played for at Clemson, and then all these guys in the pros, Dick LeBeau, of course, Bill Cower, Tim Lewis, Mike Archer. And one thing that he said about both Cower and LeBeau, specifically Bill Cower, is that he loved the way that they related to the players and that they were players guys in a way and to be able to have sustained success like they did will be considered a player's coach that's rare yeah and you can see that's obviously how he's going to try and mold himself you're talking about LeBeau who's in the NFL in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a coach slash player he understood what it took to play at the highest level and anytime as a player you know you can play through somebody play for somebody that's done that that's a good thing you know it's kind of I remember talking to the coaching staff and you know, when I asked Coach Holmes, how do you deal with the young players today's game? And, you know, they think it's all about them. And he said, you know, I don't let uh, getting to tell somebody that's been there how to do it. I've been there. You're trying to get there. So he said, 
when you're part of the group that's been there, you tell the trying to get theirs, sit back, stay in line, and listen. There's two very distinct groups. <laughs> I would think so. Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week continues Monday night. Speaking of Pittsburgh, from Heinz Field, Sullivan so Kirkland's defense will force a punt. It's been an adventure to say the least. And this one will sail out of bounds off the foot of Church and Gallon. Bammy will have the ball when we return to Orlando, up 20. Chatham from ESPN, Dr. Keith Harrison from UCF, Latanya Johnson from ESPN Wide World of Sports, and James Parker from AAU all lended their expertise. What a great learning experience for local high school students. Jay Harris becoming a fixture down here. You know, kids really get a kick out of seeing him. Somebody you see on TV all the time coming, and you can actually touch him and feel him. And he does a great job year in, year out, helping out with the Miak Swack Challenge. James Owens with the cutback and a flag on the play as he gets down to the 40 yard line. 21, James Owens. Play. Look out. That looks like a cramp. That's Damian That's Damian Fleming. Fleming. <laughs> We talked about the extreme conditions taking place, and I was surprised we didn't see any cramping in the first half. Holding offense, number 82, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. If perhaps college football's best player, Jadavian Clowney, can come into week one not at his tip-top shape in terms of physical condition, you know everybody's liable to maybe be a little bothered by the sweltering heat. Yeah, and those are the changes that I don't know how you can adapt to it. I mean, NFL players, NFL camps a lot easier now. You don't do the two days like you used to. College football, they, the kids aren't in pads as much prior to the opening of the season, which I think in some cases is a good thing because you don't need all the hitting. But week one, you're starting to see this throughout the country because camps have gotten so much easier and the body's not adjusted. I don't know if you can just ramp it up from, you know, two days a week in pads than no pads in game day right away. And I think the result is what you're starting to see throughout the country, just cramps everywhere. You know, that's something that George O'Leary from just up the road at UCF talked about. He said, we're not doing as many two-a-days this year. Guys aren't getting into that shape and conditioning that they need early on. All right, Jay, give me five. How about the top five teams in my power rankings? So we saw the official order there, but I'm going to tell you on the bubble, Alabama State, they've got a good team they got a running back by the name of Isaiah Crowell you remember the transfer from Georgia he's starting to find his groove they're getting it done Morgan State I'm putting them on the bubble they look very good versus Army an offensive dimension I've never seen from them before I'm excited to see how that could work out number five Aggie pride North Carolina A&T Rob Broadway's got the Aggies expecting high things in Greensboro North Carolina number four JSU Jackson State coach Kamaji's always going to be in contention if they can get some good quarterback play, look for them to make a run this year. Number three, Big Blue. The boys out of Nashville and the OVC, Tennessee State. Only problem with Tennessee State, year in and year out, they play the toughest schedule of any HBCU in the country because they play not only OVC schools, but HBCU powerhouses. Number two, the defending champs. I'm a big fan of Ric Flair. You remember Ric Flair? Woo! To be the man, you got to beat the man, right? They got to beat the man. But for Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're going to find out if they're legitimate enough to stay the man. And the number one team out of the power rankings, who is it? The Wildcats, Bethune Cookman. Brian Jenkins has a football squad down there. Good running backs, great defense, year in, year out. They are the class of HBCU football. Get back to that in a moment, but should we be concerned about Damian Fleming? You know, he's been on the field for a while now, what looked like a cramp, and he hasn't been able to get on his feet. I think it's spread. You know, I think it was in his legs, but now when they won't move him off the field, it's probably going up to his body and his stomach muscles. You know, getting help there and just doesn't want to move that leg. And, you know, they're going to take him to the locker room and get him an IV. Athletic training staff carrying Damian Fleming off the field. Fleming has carried the ball for 38 yards, and he's thrown for 110. Carson Royal will take over at quarterback. 
second year freshman from Jacksonville. I said give me five. You had seven on your list. On the bubble doesn't count. <laughs> okay. Just like honorable mention, I gave you the five. <laughs> First and 16. Owens hit behind the line, goes airborne at the 40. If you think my give me five with 17 is trouble, wait till the playoffs start next year. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You've got four, and they're going to be six to 17 on the bubble. They just keep growing and growing, don't, don't they? Yeah, Second yep. and 12. You know, right now, opportunity. Imagine this. You're Carson Royal, you're, you're Earl Holmes. Things are on cruise control. You got a 20 nothing lead. You lose your quarterback. And now you bring in Carson Royal, freshman quarterback who hasn't played. It's come a long way. But when you talk to the coaches, there is a little bit of a drop off when you lose Damian Fleming going to Carson Royal. Royal hands it off and what a play. That play was snuffed out by Robert Simpson. We haven't called his name enough today. And if he could do that on a continuous basis, you can see why he had over 22 tackles for loss last season. In the middle of your screen, you know, once you see him try and get away from him, strong enough to hold him down, and he's catching. That's a fast running back. You know, that's James Owens who's got 4 3 40 yard dash speed. Simpson athletic enough to chase him down with the long reach and bring him down for no gain. So third and 12 is Simpson an NFL caliber talent in your mind. Yes but I think he projects as a defensive end in a 3 4 scheme not a 4 3 defensive end. Low snap handled and knocked away at the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Russell. The other interior lineman got his hands up on that one. You talk about being disruptive, and this is why I think Simpson can be a really good player. I want you to watch. He's going to line up here. Watch the hard angle he takes here on the stunt. Look how many orange jerseys he takes with him. Two, and he split the double team, allowing a wide open lane for another rusher to come in and get the easy bat down, nowhere to go. That doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but that's one of those plays where you can tell he's a difference maker. Simpson played and in high school at Biloxi High School. Fourth and 12. Rashad Pargo back. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Clock will start with the snap. Simpson with three tackles today up front for Mississippi Valley. And the last point on Simpson with his pro prospects, he's got the frame to get bigger and get better. Fair catch asked for. And that'll be spotted at the 24 yard line. Miak Swack challenge presented by Disney continues from Orlando after this. Walt Disney World truly makes me feel. At GoArmy.com slash officer. There's strong, then there's Army strong. 9.05 to go in the third. Florida A&M leads Mississippi Valley State 20 to nothing. Part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Let's go famous alums from Mississippi Valley State. The satellite tot. Throwing it to the GOAT. Greatest of all time. Jerry Rice was... The third wide receiver taken in the 1985 draft. The Hall of Famer still owns just about every receiving record, as you would imagine, at the Valley. 30 points in one game against Kentucky State. He had 24 catches in one game against Southern. Finished ninth in the Heisman vote in 1984. Now, nothing against Al Toon or Eddie Brown, <laughs> but don't you think some teams missed out on Jerry Rice who went 16th overall? Uh, one or two of them missed <laughs> for sure, and I think a lot of teams wish they would have maybe drafted wide receiver in that draft. Patrick Ivey takes off, and he scrambles for a gain of nearly 12 on first down, and now he is down. Seen both starting quarterbacks get shaken up what would it take I mean besides the outlandish natural talent and the unbelievable amount of hard work that Jerry Rice put into his Hall of Fame career what would it take to see another Jerry Rice Whew, I don't know you just have to have that that chip on the shoulder I think the fact that he went to Mississippi Valley was that chip on the shoulder to prove it and you know work so the guys that came out of HBCU's in 
always play with a little chip on their shoulder. You look at the Walter Paytons of the world. When they made it to the pros, that wasn't good enough. They had that work ethic to continue to work off-season workouts that you hear about how they were just, you know, unforgettable how hard they worked during the off-season. I think that was that chip on the shoulder that you had in terms of the guys coming from the HBCUs back when Jerry Rice and Walter Payton played. And that even went to my generation. I mean, there was something where there was a chip on the shoulder. We didn't get to play a nationally televised games on a regular basis. So whenever you got a chance to prove your talent, you had to be twice as good. Archie Cooley was the designer of that offense. Now, he was a coach and had a nickname. You know what his nickname was? Tell you after it's this play. It's the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it's right there. First and ten. Jeremy Collins lets it go. Incomplete. So, you, so you had Jerry... Jerry's nickname was World, Jerry World Rice. He had Willie Satellite Todd, and the coach was Archie Gunslinger. Gunslinger I knew it. Ah, too late. It's Gunslinger Cooley. Here's the difference. Pre-game was 121 degrees on the turf, and if that wasn't hot enough, now it's 143. Wow. It's going to get hotter. You know, I think what with the winter peak height, for heat down here in Florida. Around 2 o'clock, I guess. Right, or 2, 3 o'clock. Coming up on if, that. Unless the sun will duck behind a cloud. Timeout used time out. by Mississippi, Mississippi Valley. Valley State. It's the first charge timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. Well, you talked about satellite. And to develop the greatest of all time, you got to have somebody get the ball to him. He could throw it, had a chance to play with the San Diego Chargers for a little while. Wasn't known for his wheels. Yeah, we, we found the one <laughs> the one highlight of him running the football. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, able to distribute the ball and, and throw it around. I mean, that offense they had was revolutionary. You know, the three wide receivers on one side and hide Jerry Rice. And there he is talking to the gunslinger, Willie Totten. Remember the College Football Hall of Fame? I mean, they had a great run, and that's something that Mississippi Valley State wants to get back to. And, and you know, one of the things that the coaching staff discussed when we talked about that prolific offense was, yeah, there were other offenses doing that at the NFL level. Warren Moon was doing it, you know, with the Oilers eventually. Buffalo did it a little bit. But at that time, unlike today, you didn't see nickels and dimes. You saw base defenses out there. And, I mean, you can't stop Jerry Rice on Tecmo Bowl. How are you going to stop him in a real game? <laughs> yeah, but also keep in mind the defense can grab and hold you back then, too. You know, put the stick them on you with the bump and run. But, yeah, it would be like cheating. And, you know, you got to think, how great would a guy like Jerry Rice be in today's football world in college with the spread offense, with, you know, everybody throwing it 50 times a game and DBs in there, not as physical as it was. It's third and 12 now for Mississippi Valley. Jeremy Collins steps up. He wants to scramble, and he gets to the logo, but a couple yards shy of the first down. And that was the difference there in Collins. He made up his mind he was going to run the football, but when you've got more than 10 yards to go, you only run if everything just opens up for you. You've got linebackers there in the middle. They're dropping. They come up and see you. That was a decision he made too quickly to run the football. And that's the first play of the day for Brandon Denmark, senior from Tallahassee, who started his career at Illinois. Denmark is a standout on that defensive side of the ball at linebacker, but we haven't seen him today. We didn't see him in the first half. They're going to punt it away. Nearly got to it. Patrick Aiken will let it hop in front of him. And there's a flag on the play. <laughs> Gallon will pick up the first down. Thanks to being unloaded upon. There's two flags. Now, now watch this. Watch, watch, watch him. He's going to grab the guy. You know, he's trying to hold him up. The kicker's like, no, no, I'm going down. <laughs> so that was one there where you saw Gallon. <laughs> he was trying to hold him up, incidental contact, and Gallon was like, let me go. I'm going to the ground. There are two fouls on the play. Running into the kicker, number 97 of the defense. Illegal block in the back, number 90 of the receiving team. That penalty will be inclined. The five-yard penalty will be enforced, resulting in a first down. So that's two first downs that the punter Gallon has picked up today one way or another, and he also let a snap go through his hands for negative 30 yards. 
Yeah, I would give him offensive MVP had it not been <laughs> for the 30-yard run there. But, I mean, once again, you know, right now Florida A&M doesn't mind this game going at a snail's pace because they're up 20-0. to If I'm Mississippi Valley, I'm stepping on the gas pedal. If we can get some points on the board, Florida A&M has a backup quarterback in the game. If they're going to make a run and try and have any chance of winning this football game, they've got to start going downfield, do hurry-up offense, and score quickly to put a little bit of pressure on Florida A&M offensively. Well, they only have five first downs, and two of those were picked up by their punter. Little option to give to the first man, Frizzell, no gain. There's no sense of urgency. I mean, look, everybody's walking back. You're down by 20 points, and you got a chance to cross midfield, which you haven't done since the first quarter, and they're just taking their time. This is just one where I think you've just got to gotta force feed them. I mean, everything you've tried offensively, what your design playbook was, hasn't worked. Change it up. Try and do some things creatively. How hard is that to be implemented by the backup quarterback instead of the starter? Everybody knows how to throw a bomb. Second and ten. To his tight end, Natron Brooks. And Brooks bulldozes his way to the 37. William Smalls and Patrick Aiken combined to bring down the 6'3", 210-pound freshman. And I get right back to the line of scrimmage and go no huddle. You got the matchup that you want. They're playing soft zone. You've got a cover three look. That's when you go hurry up so they can't change the personnel. So you've got a backup quarterback in there where he can probably get the same look from the defense that he got on the previous play. Well, they hustled out of the huddle. So at least there seems to be some sort of tempo to this. FAMU shows blitz. Collins finds a man in a hat. Flag on the play. Pass incomplete. Flags on the play. Antonio Griggs and Akil Blunt. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 47 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the sophomore from Pittsburgh gets flagged. It's, all, it's always the second one going to get caught. You saw that he got pushed a little bit in the back. They always catch the person that retaliates. You can't do that when it kill Blunt. That name sounds familiar. He's got the bloodline. Son of Mel. Mel Blunt of Steeler fame. They said he had a fantastic training camp this year, and they expect him to be a big-time football player down in Tallahassee. Dabney in motion. Jeremy Collins to throw. All-out blitz Great and call. incomplete. Oh, wow. A flag on the play. Collins took a monster hit from Brandon Denmark that knocked his helmet off. And Denmark will likely get flagged for 15. Personal foul. Roughing the passer by targeting number eight of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. By rule, number eight is ejected. Ejected. So he was late to start. This is a new one He'll have there. to miss the first half of next week. Oh, that's tough. Now. That's tough. The play that, was that. on the field. The call was on the field. And the replay booth will take mm -hmm. another look at this to make sure contact was made with the crown of the helmet or as a launch. And if it was indeed the crown. Then I think, you know, the question is, now when they look at this film, you know, according to Rogers Redding, when we talk to him, if the helmets touch at all, then the ejection stands. But if there's no contact with the helmet, then Denmark should be allowed to continue in the game. And while he would be allowed to continue in the game, the penalty is not reversible so it would stand the discussion with the replay booth here is now so let's take a look i think it touches you know it doesn't have to be a blatant one but obviously it touches because the helmet comes off and i think because there was contact helmet to helmet i don't think by rule that denmark's going to be allowed to come in the game it is not a new rule. It's always been a rule. It's just a new penalty and a much stiffer penalty 
With the attention paid to concussions and player safety, you can understand why. And if you're at home saying, and these guys in the rules committee have no feel for what happens on the football field. Coaches are part of the rules committee. Yes. At the FBS level, you're talking about Brett Bielema of Arkansas and Troy Calhoun from Air Force, who are two coaches that represent the FBS level of coaches. Player safety first. I mean, first and foremost. And, you know, when you talk about these type of plays, you know, I think the hit that you've seen over and over again during the offseason with the clowny hit on the Michigan running back last season, yes, that would be a penalty this year. And in that type of situation, they're going to enforce it. They're trying to let, make the message clear. Helmet to helmet contact is to try and be avoided at all costs. And so the replay booth is confirming or looking at video to confirm that it was. See, if the helmets touch, helmets touch. I mean, you saw it there, even though the hand got in the way, the helmets touch. So by definition, he should. Be ejected from the game. It's a stand. And there's some key words to remember when the officials are deciding on the field live as it happens if it is targeting. Launch, crouch, leaping, and lowering. After further review, the elbow thrown by defensive player number eight was not above the shoulders or the neck area. So he is therefore not disqualified for the, from the game. However, the 15-yard penalty is still enforced by rule. First down, Mississippi Valley State. And I think we're, there's going to be a lot of confusion about this rule over the year. Yeah. I mean, that is helmet. That is hit, leading with the crown and the elbow. I don't see how after you review it, especially when the instructions that the official have is when in doubt, throw them out. There's the return of Patrick Ivey. Brandon Denmark. Or Brandon <laughs> Denmark, pardon me. <laughs> they ejected him, sent him to the locker room, and then he was right back out here running. So not only that, he's going to participate in the next play. Uh, you, we had a chance to see that review many times. They, they talked about the forearm. We were looking at the helmet. What, what the, do you the, think now that you've seen it? I, I think they missed it first game, and this is one where the officials will get better. I mean, I, I don't know if they're calling the launch with the forearm. I mean, the shiver, I mean, that was just a forearm shiver. It didn't come above the shoulders at all. Well, it's still, it can still it, be targeting if you're leading with your helmet, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow to attack. And I think they declared that it was not leading with the helmet. They were declaring it was the forearm, and the forearm was below the shoulder pad. So I'm still trying to sort it out myself. First, you know, first game of college football season, first time we've come across that one. So Denmark back on the field. It is a 15-yard penalty that stands. That is not reviewable. And inside the five on a sprawling run goes Cortez Frizzell. So some silly penalties against FAMU here on this drive, allowing Mississippi Valley to pick up a couple of first downs. And now they have a second and three inside the five. Still can't figure out why there's no sense of urgency to get to the line of scrimmage and to try and get as many offensive plays possible so they can get back in the game. Timeout. Lord and him. It's the first charge timeout of the half. It's Under five seconds. minutes to go in the third quarter. It's a 20 nothing score. Mississippi Valley waiting to punch it in. The U.S. Open Round of 16, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN2. It's a golden opportunity to discover a hybrid from the luxury car company that understands that one type of hybrid isn't right for everyone. Come to the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event and choose from one of five Lexus hybrids that's right for you, including the Lexus ES and CT hybrids. This is the pursuit of perfection. There's no doubt I'm playing weak. Donald showed off his dance moves. This drive has been aided by two key personal foul penalties against FAMU. One came on roughing the kicker. Moved the chains after fourth down. 
And then this targeting foul on Brandon Denmark. Denmark stayed in the game after video review, but the 15-yard penalty gave Valley a first down. Now second and three. Give to the inside, legs still churning is Patrick Durr. Maybe got one. So third and short, first down still possible before they get to the end zone. How do you drop a play now with Jeremy Collins, your quarterback? I run the football. I mean, the one thing he does do is he can he can run, but I would follow the fullback. They had some success when they put Joe Nathan Davis in motion. Big fullback number 49. I don't see him in the game, so I, I kind of wish they went power for power right now. And said pistol with Collins lined up. And here's the handoff to Durr. Durr gets swallowed up. And that'll bring up fourth down. John Ojo came up from his safety spot. Trying to avoid the shutout. Looks like Mississippi Valley is going to take the points Ooh. on fourth down from the four. It's not fourth and goal. I mean, they need two yards. You see him slip right there. There was a hold there that wasn't called. You no, know, with them this close, you're down 20 to three. Was it three points to make the scoreboard look good? Jershon Gallon will come on to attempt the field goal. He's picked up two first downs today. This is a 21 yard attempt. And Gallon puts the Devils on the board. 20 to 3 with 3.20 to go in the third quarter. Let's take a look at the Sports Network FCS poll. The Bison of North Dakota State, right. back to back <laughs> national champs. And they start with an upset of Bill Snyder's Kansas State Wildcats. Yeah, but watch out for number four, Eastern Washington, Vernon Adams, quarterback. They found an offense. I mean, they put up 49 points on Oregon State yesterday. Their legitimate can play. Sam Houston State, two time runner up national champion. Running back Tim Flanders, if they could find a way to get over that hurdle, which is North Dakota State, we'd be talking about them in the same breath. That's a pretty big hurdle to clear for the Bearcats. 3.20 to go. 20 to 3, FAMU with the lead. Before you saw the top 10, there's been one HBCU to win a national championship since they've gone to the playoff format. Well, FAMU hasn't even been in the postseason since 01 when they won in Boone and upset Appalachian State in the first round. It's from the MIAC Conference, too. They get a flag on the kicking team. Now they said they didn't reset it, so the back judge says reset it again. Vasti Paul and Trayvon Holmes deep to return. Trayvon Holmes to the 30. You want to know the number? Show me what team we do it. The team you talked yourself out of, Florida and Oh, come on. <laughs> Only right HBCU to win a national championship. Got close with Quinn Gray, was a quarterback of Florida and when they went up to App State, made it to the semifinals. I think that's one of the goals you see for the MEAC conference is now that they've expanded the FCS playoffs to 20 teams. They've had the benefit of getting two teams in on multiple occasions. And Commissioner Thomas, I'm sure we could ask him, he's committed to trying to win a postseason football game. Under Jake Gaither, they won six black college national football championships. Carson Royal in the game at quarterback again. And to Owens. How many... How many is too many when it comes to the postseason and those ever expanding on, playoffs? Now, I know that over the years, there have been some very deserving teams that have been left out of the postseason. Maybe it's one team one year, maybe it's two another, and it can be very controversial. But at which point 
do you get to diminishing returns when you keep expanding the participation? I, I don't think four is enough. I think if you're going to do it, you know, do it legitimately. Nobody, if you're a team in the top ten and you get shortchanged, nobody minds that. But I think it teams, you know, if you're the number five ranked team, depending on the formula, I mean, you could have an undefeated season and be left out. And so I just, for some reason, I've always thought that there's going to be False some debate. Start. Offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, second down. Because I could see on, on a regular basis, you know, when you talk about the, the play upcoming playoffs, I could see two teams from the SEC getting in, the champion and whoever loses that game. And then I think if those are two spots gone right away, then you're left to pick between the power conferences. Pac-12 may want one. Big 12 may want one. What Big about? 10's going to want one. So then are you going to shortchange one of them? And then the Miracles, the Cinderella's, will have no chance at all. But, you know, the boys, these are those teams making that run. Second and nine. And from an FCS perspective, the playoffs keep growing. Play clock runs out. You, Bethune Cookman's number one in your power pull. Is, is that a team that should be there this season when all is said and done? Five yard penalty. Second down. See, and I think with FCS, the expansion is warranted because they can't play each other. You know, you don't see as many conferences playing each other. And, you know, they've got what the automatic qualifiers. So if you win, you've got, I think it's 12 automatic qualifiers now. So 12 teams are automatically getting in just for winning their league title, which I think is right. And then you've got the not automatic qualifiers which those eight spots are up for grabs and becomes very debatable as well and their teams on the bubble that don't make it year in and year out as well Towson would be an example last year Towson many people thought they should have gotten in well I think that chip on the shoulder if they can beat UConn shouldn't they be able to play in the FCS playoffs and they could embarrass UConn and they had a good showing at LSU last year first half of that game they were kind of in there Third and 12. Uh, see, that's why I'm saying if, if, if Valley could have scored that touchdown, had a sense of urgency, FAMU offense is going to be one-dimensional right now. They're showing you they're not going to trust Carson Royal to, to blow this football game. They're going to hand it off every chance they can. Three-step drop passing game, which you're seeing right now. you got to be going two-minute offense right now in the fourth quarter. There's a flag at the end of that play after Royal got folded up. Damian Fleming, their starting quarterback, has been in the locker room, attended to by the athletic training staff after he suffered body cramps. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary. Number seven of the defense, 15-yard penalty. Oh, wow. Avery Boykin gets flagged. He had a pick earlier this game. You, you got a team struggling, getting ready to punt the football back to you. I mean, this is this is the backup quarterback coming in there. Yeah, he's clearly going. That's a good call. You know, no, you know, the competitor in me wants to see the game go on. He's down. He launched at him. Well, so why isn't that? I thought that was a lot. Yeah. for ejecto. That's <laughs> what we saw Indiana State, Indiana yep. on Thursday night. Very similar play. McBurse. Former Big Ten player at Purdue is in the game. There's a flag at the outset of that one as he struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, I, I think with this targeting rule, there's going to be a lot of discussion every game. And in the biggest of games is where you'll see the biggest of differences. Personal foul. Chop block. Number 65 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. If you lose a key player, especially a key defender in college football, that could make all the difference. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. You see a chop block there. That, that's an easy call right there. You're not allowed. If another teammate's engaged up high, you can't go low under any circumstances. That was an easy call there. That was a freshman mistake there by Keontae Cash, left guard, true freshman who they say is going to be, they call him Little Box, Little Nate. Little Nate, like Little Nate Newton, for the former Florida A&M legend. That time they're going with a chop block. 5'11", 330. He could fit in a box. McBurse up to the 39-yard line. Third quarter will come to an end. Uh, that Jeremy Johnson tackle. It's 20-3, FAMU leading Mississippi Valley. Back for the fourth quarter from the MEAC SWAC Challenge presented by Disney. No homework to check. No school vacations to work around. 
no photos with Mickey. Discovery.com. Look what we discovered. FAMU cheerleaders. 20 to 3, we got the lead. It's about 140 degrees on the field. All right, fellas, you guys do it without us in the fourth <laughs> quarter. I've never seen that before. They're out. Did the cheerleaders quit? You know, <laughs> you see a lot of teams hold up four fingers, signifying we're going to the fourth quarter, play to the end. <laughs> Get some new drills for the cheerleading squad. Flag on the play on the run up the middle by DeMont Bice. Did we just, hold on, did we just see cheerleaders go into the locker room during the game? That is Sports Center, not top 10. Personal foul, top block, 55, 15-yard penalty, second down. I mean, maybe they should have given a little message like, you know, all right, guys, you got this. <laughs> We're going to take right. it in. It's 20 to 3. What do you need us for? <laughs> Or maybe they're, they're making a statement. Too many flags. Second and 34. I really enjoyed talking with Earl Holmes this week about restoring pride in the FAMU program. That's his team theme. And he's stressed and has stressed to his players that history is bigger than us. And it's easy for him to remember, he said, when you walk down Bob Hayes Lane, when you walk through doorways that have been graced by generations of star players and student athletes, You know, and, and he's from it. You know, he's actually from Tallahassee, so he grew up idolizing some of those, and he became one of the Florida A&M legends as well, succeeded in the NFL, and I think he's really going about it the right way. You know, you have to know about the history of the program first to realize why you're playing. He said he just thought that the players had just assumed, well, we're at Florida A&M, we're supposed to be better, but he wanted to teach him, why are you Florida A&M? Actually sat him down and they watched a documentary at one Illegal point. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty's declined. Third down. And that was an eye opener for a lot of guys in the team that maybe weren't acutely aware of the history of the program and the players and coaches that came before them. I mean, they go on and on. I mean, you know, Willie Gallimore, Bullet Bob Hayes, obviously legendary Jake Gaither. And we talk about the, you know, the Earl Holmes and the, the Nate Newtons, Henry Lawrence. I mean, so many players from such a story program. And if you say, if you don't know your history, then you don't know where you're going to or where you've come from. And he's clearly trying to instill that in the Rattlers. Another carry for Bice. The trophy awaits the winner. Florida A&M up by 17. The Miak Swack Challenge. FAMU finished last season four and seven. Coaching change with a couple of games remaining. And so they've handed it over to the hitman, Earl Holmes. Coach Holmes, and I don't know if he showed his own highlights, he had 30 tackles in one game against Southern. 30 tackles. That was a 25-yard punt after the backspin bounce. Hey, the cheerleaders are back. Now we need some action. It's FAMU up 20 to 3. I was one of those guys. 20 to 3, FAMU leads Mississippi Valley State. Let's take a look at our Royal Purple focus on performance in a fantastic outing on this hot afternoon by the Rattlers D. I mean, anytime you're pitching a shutout, you're really getting things done. Mississippi Valley State had a couple opportunities, but give credit to the Rattlers, keeping them out of the end zone, limiting the boys from Mitabina to only a field goal on this hot afternoon. Three takeaways, and they've held them to just one for nine on third down conversions. Jeremy Collins, a quarterback, steps up, looks back. Complete behind the sticks. Change of direction for Richard Drake, and he's got a first down. 
Feed the stud. Find ways to get him in the game. Now get up to the line of scrimmage. See, now they're going no huddle. I thought they should have done this, you know, probably eight minutes ago in the football game. If you go no huddle right now, you may get the same defensive look that you saw in the previous play. They bring two extra men. They run right by him with Patrick Durr. And Durr wrestled down by Michael Ducree. Get up to the line of scrimmage. As a quarterback, you've got to take the lead. Right now, you know, you take a look at Collins. He's not giving them a sense of urgency like, let's hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage. If he's back 10 yards away from the ball, then the team's going to say, oh, we've got time. But as a quarterback, if you rush up there, then they kind of hear you a little bit louder. Your offense gets set quicker. Here comes the corner blitz. He goes the opposite way and right through the hands of Kenneth Dabney. Dabney's had some hands issues today. He might be one of those guys that gets discovered by the defensive coaches if he keeps that up. <laughs> He'll be playing defense next week. But, but Dabney, you've got to make that one. At 5'7", 156, you've got to think that most balls you get are going to miss on the high side practice catching balls out the jug machines above your head all the time third and four now for Valley they're just one of nine Amu shows blitz again and a false start against Mississippi false Valley start. will back them up offense number 86 five yard penalty third down the third and four to third and nine you know, that difference becomes as a quarterback you're thinking third and four if I don't see anything I like I can take off and run pick up the four yards becomes third and nine you got to stay in the pocket please reset the game clock to 11 minutes 42 seconds Florida A&M defense has allowed only four yards per play Let's watch Julian Stafford this play. That's supposed to be their go-to guy. Let's see if he can make a big play when the team needs you. Junior from Memphis, Tennessee. They go out of the backfield instead to Patrick Durr. And Durr is a blur as he gets inside the 20. Devin Roberts brings him down. Senior from Ocala. They're going with the screen. They had this play open earlier. They just missed it. Good job getting to the outside. And watch him set up the big block by Trevin Wallace in front of him. Give him a move to the outside and cut back to the inside. Good timing on the screen by Patrick Durr. Only three points to show for it so far for Mississippi Valley. Now deep ball. End zone. Flag on the play. They were aiming for Drake. Aiken had the coverage. Flag came all the way back at the six instead of in the end zone where Drake was. I should say where he ended up. Holding. Foul occurred against an eligible receiver. The distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Aiken had him tied up on Drake's move. Once again, it's the Florida A&M defense helping out the offense from Mississippi Valley, allowing the Delta Devils to get in scoring position off of penalties. First and goal, they put it in the hands of Durr. And he takes it down to the one. Clock running under 11 minutes. Good crease. They brought an outside blitz from the outside over the slot receiver. If you can get to where the blitzing linebacker or cornerback is coming from, nice crease there, and they took advantage. Jonathan Davis hustles off the field. Second and goal. 
quarterback sneak and he's in touchdown Delta Devils their first of the 2013 campaign just watch the surge this is from about two yards out they're calling the quarterback sneak getting low driving and that right there they just wanted it a little bit more you gotta wonder is the fatigue setting in for Florida A&M Collins, Collins first ball. rushing touchdown Church and Gallon on for the extra point. <laughs> 10 21 to go. MEX Wack Challenge presented by Disney and a beautiful look at the Magic Kingdom. Back to the Citrus Bowl in a moment. MEAC SWAC Challenge is presented by Walt Disney World Resort. Visit MyDisneyDiscovery.com and uncover a world of grown-up and family fun you never imagined. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Great tailgate was held this morning over on McCracken Field adjacent to the Citrus Bowl Stadium. Fans and general public enjoyed the pregame festivities with event sponsors in an interactive tailgate area. The food, games, entertainment, and fun. A great crowd here this morning, even before we arrived for the game. In the sweltering heat that has been an issue all weekend in college football. James Owens and Basti Paul deep. And another flag on the kickoff that ends up out of bounds. <laughs> That's Gallon, the punter. You know, he doubles up as a kickoff guy. <laughs> and their most effective rusher. Yeah, I mean, kicked it straight out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team number eight. Florida A&M has elected to take the ball at the 35-yard line, first down. With only two races left until the chase for the cup, Jimmy Johnson looks to maintain his lead on the field as the competition heats up at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, Sunday at 7 on ESPN, and also live on Watch ESPN. First and ten from the 40. Now it's sellout time right now. If, if you're Mississippi Valley State, it's sellout. Eight men on the line of scrimmage. Dare Florida and them to throw the ball with their backup quarterback. Dial up all of your best run-stopping blitzes. When it comes down to these plays right now, you got ten minutes to go. Your offense finally scored a touchdown. Put pressure on the freshman quarterback. Dare him to beat you. Is this where Robert Simpson can make an impact? Oh, clearly. I mean, he's the best defensive player you have on the defensive line, so you need to make some plays. See, I like this. This guy's coming close to the line of scrimmage. Eight guys around the line of scrimmage. Make him throw it. He doesn't do it. He should be sacked right now. And he gets it away. Out of bounds, incomplete. Lenworth Lennon, the intended receiver. So on third down, you can dial it up again, right? Oh, definitely. You definitely dial up, but you do anticipate pass a little bit more where you say, all right, if he does pass, then we have an opportunity to go for the interception. But you say you're not going to let him run the ball. And I guess the formation that Florida a breaks the huddle in will determine how aggressive you can be if you bring that eighth guy by the line of scrimmage. I'd have no cushion on anybody. Want to get rid of it quick. Hauled in to bring up fourth down short of the chains yep. by Michael Morris. <laughs> that, that was a good job. There you go. That'll stop the cramping. <laughs> is, that, is that what they say? Is that what you use now for the 
for the cramps? What happened to Well, I know you can also use pickle juice if you got a blister. So yeah. if you're cramping and you have blisters, you could just double up. <laughs> I've always thought it was bananas. That would work. Remember back in the day, they used to tell you to take a salt, salt tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out to be the exact wrong thing to do. They got the stop. Fargo set to return. Good looking punt. Fargo will take it at the six. Here he goes. Fargo finds a sideline crunching block there, and he's out of bounds past the 30. Well, that was about to open up for Fargo. Mississippi Valley State back on offense. Monday Night Football, Eagles Redskins and Texans Chargers, September 9th on ESPN. Building animatronics is all about getting things to work together. Timing, the actions, the reactions. Everything has to sync up. My expenses are no different. Receipt Match from American Express synchronizes your business expenses. Just shoot your business card receipts and they're automatically matched up with the charges on your online statement. I'm John Kaplan and I'm a member of a synchronized world. This is what membership is. This is what membership does. I was one of those guys who didn't think the Army had anything for me. Then I found out that less than one-tenth of one percent of all Americans wear the uniform of an Army officer. It's a small group of us, but we're among the most highly educated compared to many other corporations or institutions. I was surprised at what I found in being an officer and at what the Army helped bring out of me. I Major Miles B. Caggins III, Officer, United States. Well, the quarterback has returned. Damian Fleming stretching out on the exercise bike. Back on the other side, the ball's on the turf for Mississippi Valley. And the sideline. Guys are getting plugged everywhere. That time, one of his teammates standing on the sideline got hit by that errant pass. Second and ten coming. Continue to try and throw the football. You've got to at this stage of the game. Find where you get a one-on-one -on -one matchup and just let it go. Hopefully one of the big playmakers on the outside, either Drake or Stratford, Stafford, come down with a big catch for you. Ball start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Now, I know the MEAC conference was excited about showing off the technology they have with the interactive communication system between the officials, but I don't think Daryl Davis thought or Darryl, <laughs> that thought that he was going to be using his uh, <laughs> stadium speaker so often. How many penalties do we have today? 24 between the two to the perimeter complete. Wireless headsets used by these MEAC officials as they do now in the SEC, and they've been experimenting with at the NFL in preseason games. Yeah, the problem isn't the, the microphone that he wears to communicate with his cohorts. The problem is he's had to use a microphone in stadium too many times. Let's see, clock's running. Well, you've got to see that. Clock's running. Get some urgency. Collins lets it go to the outside. Good hands by Drake, and he takes it nearly to the 40. Richard Drake, a transfer from Middle Tennessee State. He's got a nice frame, 6'2", 200 pounds. Ah, uh, man. Three catches for 31 yards. They're going to punt it away on fourth and three. I don't know why you don't go for the situation. A lot of confidence in the defense to give yeah. the ball up. I'd watch for the fake punt in this situation. Need three yards for it. Gallon is the punter. Gets away a good one. Lenworth Lennon at the 15. Oh. 24 yard line is the spot. ESPN 2 has a special Labor Day weekend edition of Sunday Night Baseball tonight as the Mets and Nationals try to keep their wild card hopes alive in a divisional matchup. Mets versus Nationals tonight on ESPN 2 and also live on uh, Watch ESPN. 
Jay, we're talking about all those big FCS wins over FBS teams over the weekend. Brett McMurphy tweeted out some numbers. Oregon State paid $450,000 to lose. <laughs> USF 400. Kansas State paid the Bison $350,000 to come to Manhattan and leave with the win. Iowa State paid Northern Iowa 350 and on and on. That is a win, win, win. You take the check and you take the double. I mean, anytime, you know, normally, you know, I've talked to coaches around there, and, you know, they say, wow, you get an opportunity to go on the road, play a team that you can beat, not get beat up and win the game and get a check. I mean, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, what about the one, where, how much did App State get paid that year? They wouldn't basically just <laughs> brought down the big house. They got multiple checks because they got the check <laughs> handed to them. Then all that resi residual money that flew in from Ohio State fans buying App State shirts. Yeah. And all the attention they got for winning in the big house. But you know what the flip side of that is? App State can't get those games anymore. You know, once, once you start to win and beat some of them, then the, the big boys won't play anymore. Well, they're going to be one of the big boys before long. Maybe not Michigan big, but. HBCU postgame report coming up as soon as we're finished here, presented by Lexus. And by the way, Teddy Bridgewater, the Heisman hopeful at Louisville, will get his season started this afternoon. Bottom of the hour as Louisville opens its campaign. Bridgewater's from Florida. He yep. can play in the heat. This is John Johnson's first carry of the game, and he stretches to the marker oh, for a 10-yard gain. It's, it's, oh, he got a favorable spot. Barmy, wow. Omari, Albert. Wow, they loaded the box. They put nine guys around the line of scrimmage, but Albert was still able to bounce to the outside. I thought he was short by about a yard, but I saw the side judge come in. Appalachian State got 400,000 for that win in the big house. And as you mentioned, probably worth a million if you trade off everything else that they got in residual. And that was a shot heard around the world, clearly. Good move at the left side. Another run by Albert. They'll be headed up to the FBS next season. I don't know if that move is possible without that win at Michigan. The college football landscape is changing. I will say, you know, I, I did the FCS championship this year, semifinals previous years. Those are some really solid programs. You know, I was not surprised to see Eastern Washington beat Oregon State yesterday. And Oregon State's top 25 club. That's uh, the way they can score, and they've got a system in place, and they've got some guys coming through there. North Dakota State can do it on a continual basis. And they've got some of the best fans you're going to see. They travel very well. This is McBurst on the left side, taking men with him to the sideline. Carried by number one, Al Turek McBurst. Out at the 41, a gain of 18. Coach Holmes wanted to see his team run the football. They couldn't do it early, but now in the fourth quarter, when it counts, hard to bring down. Getting, Showing you that four-minute offense exemplified trying to secure the victory. And cramping issues creeping up for Worrell Troop. Senior from Miami out of Coral Gables High. Under five minutes to go. So, Jay, give me five. How about five players you need to know if you're going to follow HBCU football? Quay Cox, defensive back from Jackson State, shouldn't be listed as QB. Then you've got Ben Anderson, the quarterback, Arkansas Pine Bluff. He's a very special talent. Going on long, number three, Ike Jackson, running back Bethune-Cookman. People wanted the key to Bethune's success. It all starts with him, the running back. Number two, LeBrandon Richardson, defensive end, coming to his own NFL talent. And number one, you saw him earlier. What would you think? Damian Fleming, the quarterback from Florida a and I think he's one of those guys you got to know. He's a special talent. Follow him as the season goes on. Cramping issues chase Fleming from the game. Give to the fullback, Lonnie Lockett, senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We got to start using timeouts right now. Or cramps and another man down. 
This time it's Deshaun Davis. There were a couple of issues late last night during that Georgia Clemson game where it seems it seems Georgia defenders were taught to go down to try and slow down Clemson's spread offense. Yeah, I think we heard them talk about it too when they, the commentators calling the game said they know for a fact there's some coaches out there that kind of Kirk Herbstreit mentioned that teach you how to go down and, and that's very true you know they don't want to talk about it but if you go down and you kind of fake it and it's so obvious then it doesn't work but if you can become efficient doing it slow down a team when momentum's not on your side that's been taking place in football for years I mean teams were doing that versus the Buffalo Bills when they brought the hurry up into the NFL here goes McBurse inside the 30 and a flag on the play. Should teams be flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct when they fake injuries to stop the clock, either gaining a timeout or slowing down a spread hurry up offense? Gray area because you got to assume that the player is hurt. And, you know, all leagues, levels of football, it's safety first. Penalizing them for safety, Holy. I don't know. Offense, number 81, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second no. down. No. Let's take a look at our player of the game brought to you by the U.S. Army, Damian Flan Fleming. When you talk about safety coming first, hasn't re entered since he left with cramps. Safety first there. Fleming didn't see his full body work, got a cramp in the first series of the second half. But when he's on the field, you can tell he can throw it, but he's got a plethora of running backs that are really starting to show that they can play to be a compliment to Mr. Fleming. Second and long. And Omari Albert straight ahead. So you don't think there's any way you can enforce that going forward? You know, you could almost do it like with the NBA when they've got the flopping rule. You know, you've got some guys you'll see that are just bad actors. But how can you call? How can you tell me if I've got a cramp? You know, if I'm cramping, how can you tell me? So what do you do? Do you, I mean, do you, you penalize them afterwards, maybe start finding them? Well, no, but I, I think if you get to a point, and this could play into player safety, if you're hurt so bad or cramping so bad that we stop play, can't come back. you can't come back until maybe there's a fresh set of downs or for the rest of that series. Then, it, then who's going to drop out? You know, you, you're not going to lose a key player to drop out to stop the clock. You can't take that risk. Let's take a look at our Lexus playbook. We showed you Damian Fleming and his numbers. Here's how he got a big chunk of that yardage on the ground. I mean, it was a key. You come out, you're respecting his arm. He's going to try and pick you apart. But the pocket presence to say, okay, I've got guys that are covered. What can I do to pick up this first down? Tuck it and show the mobility. And added dimension to Damian Fleming's playbook. It's showing the versatility at the quarterback position, which is making him more of an offensive weapon. His backup Carson Royal in to hand it off. Quick move behind the line of scrimmage and a sprint on the left side for Omari Albert. You like that idea? If you're going to leave the game due to injury, you can't return until a fresh set of downs if you're a defensive player? Not, not really, because I'm big on playing, you know, because I've seen times where you've been injured. I mean, what if you get a little stinger and then two, two minutes or 30 seconds later, you feel okay once the sensation goes through. It's a thought process going on the right direction, but I just think it's so tough to, you know, to do it. I'm not like, you know, for me, you know, one of my, I have an issue sometimes with the helmet rule. You know, I know it's all about player safety, but we've seen it time and time again where a guy is clearly not hurt at all. Helmet accidentally came off or the defense shoved it off and the guy's got to leave the game. Who wins in that situation? So... I'm big on keeping players in the game. Miak Swag Challenge presented by Disney. As we've said, it's more than just a football game this weekend. The Mean Green Marching Machine, part of the band showcase at Epcot, and the return of the Marching 100 out for 22 months. What do you think about the performances today? You know, somebody that follows them, and as a fan, I, I'll be quite honest, it was tough for me to watch. I mean, it, it's, we got 40 guys on the field, and the punt goes <laughs> off. <laughs> what the sweet? There'll be some extra time spent at special teams practice but this week. There were so many guys on the field, the official <laughs> didn't know what he was looking at, and that flag came out late. I got 14 guys in the field right now in white. And that's, 
after a timeout. Jay, it's only a 10-point game. I, I, you know, it feels like a 40-point game, but it's only a 10-point game. And that's what we've been saying. There's been no urgency for Mississippi Valley. It seemed as if they kind of knew the offense couldn't score points, and they didn't have a sense of urgency. Now they're getting a penalty. Too many men on the right, field. Should be first Illegal down. substitution on the defense. More than 11 players on the field. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. So it's just outside of fourth and five, apparently. Or will it be a first down? It should be a first down. It was fourth and he five. He said it remains fourth. Now they're going to flip the chains. It's been a long day. It's hot. The enforcement of the penalty, we will measure to determine whether or not it's a first down. And if it is a first down, as we assume it will be, then this will be a back-breaking penalty for Mississippi Valley State. Instead of getting the ball back down two scores with 2.42 to go, FAMU will have a fresh set of downs. And with them out of timeouts, that, that should be the end of it. U.S. Army is proud to support the DX5 Talent and HBCU football. I don't want to put anybody on the spot here, but obviously the biggest improvement we hear from week one to week two is from week one to week two. And typically we think about players in that regard. Does the same hold true for coaches? I think so. The special teams, they can tighten everything up. Here's that substitution penalty. I mean, look at all the bodies. Fourteen people on the field you at missed one. Two at the you missed oh, one I missed one. Missed my fault. Fifteen, sixteen <laughs> on the field at once. I mean, that's a pretty easy call. And at that stage of the game, that's how you end your football game. FAMU is going to run out the clock right now, unless a turnover happens. And a great scramble by Albert. He is carrying the load. Number thirty-two, Amari Albert on here. Albert, their leading rusher now with 45 yards today. And the story remains the same for Mississippi Valley. And take for what it's worth. The defense is still pretty good. And gave up 20 points, kept them in there. The special teams really let them down. Offensively, I mean, they've got some issues on offense. Carson Royal content to let that play clock wind all the way down to three before they take the snap. Sean Davis has to come off the field. He lost a shoe. Ohio and ninth ranked Louisville coming up in about 15 minutes as Teddy Bridgewater, the Florida native. Kicks off what many think could be a Heisman contending campaign. How about A.J. McCarr? I think he'll start to get the comprehensive vote for his body of work. Body is one toenail short. Here's McBurse on the left side, and he's in. Touchdown, FAMU. Touchdown. It's just McBurst. This is what they want. Follow the fullback. Good kick out block by the fullback. Bodies going down. Turn the shoulders north south. Show a little speed. Good sign for Florida AM to have McBurst reaching that potential. Too many men on the field equals too many points for FAMU. It's a 27 to 10 lead with 111 to go. 
So who's more refreshing, the world's most refreshing can, or Ice Cube? Make this quick, I'm claustrophobic. They both have a two-stage cold activation and a frost brew liner. But how do they vent? How much more of this can I gotta take, man? I'm done with this. Impressive. A single vent. Amazing. A double vent for a smoother, more refreshing flow. Ice Cube is cold, but Coors Light is the ultimate in cold refreshment. Let me up out of here. Crack the door. The world's most refreshing can only from Coors Light. You like to try new things. Now we have bold new tastes like never before. You like things made by hand. We're now grilling up freshly made egg whites. You like to cool down. We just added a refreshing new smoothie. You get wrapped up in things. We're introducing new delicious ways for you to eat. There's no one quite like you. Now more than ever, there's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. Be in our app. Go to I'mLovingIt.com. Held over through Labor Day at Joseph A. Bank. Buy one, get two free. That's almost everything in the store. Buy one, get two absolutely free. Plus, buy a suit or sport coat and get three free. That's America's finest suits and sport coats. Buy one, get three absolutely free at Joseph A. Bank. Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Famu leading 27 to 10. The cheerleaders got their respite. They came out of the shade, and they're doing a tremendous job here in the fourth quarter, aren't they, Jay? A lot to celebrate. Teams on their way to a victory, 27 to 10. Florida A&M starting off the season on the right foot. This is Stafford bottled up at the 27-yard line. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Robert Flores. All right, Tom, coming up bottom of the hour right here on ESPN, your first look at Heisman hopeful Teddy Bridgewater as number nine Louisville will host Ohio. That's coming up bottom of the hour right here on ESPN. Back to Orlando. Should be a great one in Louisville. Thank you, Robert. 27 to 10 here, a minute five to go. Miak Swack challenge pointed towards FAMU. And just some missed opportunities for Mississippi Valley State, some mistakes of their own doing. Yeah, they've got to improve on an offense that only averaged 17 points a game. They come out in the opening game, only get 10 points. Too many penalties. Special teams wasn't there. The defense can still uh, carry you to a championship. But offensively, they've got some questions that need to be answered and in a hurry. Collins takes off on the draw, brought down after a gain of 10 by Michael Ducre. A couple of good positive plays leave you with a good taste in your mouth if you're the Delta Devils. Everything can work. When the offense is struggling, you just want anything. I think more importantly for them, they've just got to go and do some film study and find out who wants to play, who are some of the playmakers. But it's just been one of those days. And I think, you know, the big questions out there, going into week one of the season, everybody has questions. And as a coach, you know in the back of your mind, you've got some concern. And Florida a and their questions, how good can we run the football? How well can we run it and be effective? And for Carl Morgan over at Mississippi Valley was, how can the offense show up? And that question, I think it's even more of a question mark now after today's performance. Incomplete over the middle. Trying to find Julian Stafford. There's some upcoming HBCU games on ESPNU. Busy schedule. Which one jumps out at you? You're going to see some good ones. I think, you know, Hampton, South Carolina State. How good can the Bulldogs be? South Carolina State versus North Carolina a and a good one. Alabama State versus Jackson State early. 
SWAC matchup that's going to have long term implications on who plays in the SWAC championship to the best teams in HBCU football. Incomplete to bring up fourth and ten off the hands of Stafford. And Florida AM is already on the trophy. And the Rattlers open their season here. They'll be right back here to close the season against Bethune Cookman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I talked to Coach Holmes. We can talk all we want about the season, what's going to happen. I know he's got an eye on what's taking place down in Daytona Beach between Bethune Cookman. Programs are bitter. In state rivals, and that game here at the end of the year is always one of the best contests you'll see in the HBCU landscape. One of seven games the Rattlers will play in their home state this season. Five at home, this one, and then closing it here at the Florida Citrus Bowl against their rivals. Turnover on downs with 11 seconds left. It will be the victory formation for FAMU. Good hard-fought victory for Coach Holmes and the staff. And he was an interim head coach last year when they took the loss to Bethune-Cookman. Now he comes back and gets a victory to start off the season. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Earl Holmes and his career as a head coach of Florida A&M. A lot of people in Tallahassee are pulling for him for the hometown boy. I know it brings him joy to bring victory for the Rattlers here today. It will be Jeremy Collins to take a knee. And FAMU will start the season 1-0. Oh. Here's your final score of the Rattlers, 27. Welcome to the Lexus HBCU postgame report. Tom Hart and Jay Walker here in Orlando for the MEAC SWAC Challenge. And Damian Fleming stood out among the crowd. Early in the contest, they came out anticipating him to throw the ball everywhere, but really hurt him with his legs when called upon. Showed that he's more than just a pocket passer. He can run the footballs well, but at the end of the day, what does he do? Put the ball up, allow the playmakers to make plays. Great catch by Linworth Lynn in there. Damian Fleming getting it done for the Rattlers. He threw for 110 yards and eight completions. He carried it six times for 38 and a touchdown run. And this was all before leaving early in the third quarter due to cramping. A full day for Damian Fleming. And the MEAC SWAC challenge ends with the Rattlers coming out on top. Our final score, 27-10. to 10. For Jay Walker, I'm Tom Hart. Now to the studio and Robert Flores. In Louisville today, fans are ready to finally feast on a much-anticipated football season that's being served right up for them. Teddy Bridgewater will kick off his Heisman campaign against Ohio. He's the star attraction on a Cardinals team many expect to be BCS Bowl.